Okay, and welcome to this mad and ridiculous and amazing event. Um, I do actually, I didn't think that I knew anybody that liked this, so I just went on Twitter to see if anybody liked it, and it turned out that lots of people do. And then there is somebody that I know in this whole room now. But um, so a hundred of you, and probably more, all decided that you wanted to come and do this and spend a whole morning doing this. And 13 people said that they wanted to help. And so I'm going to add a few of those 13 people so you get to see them. Um, and I'm going to, I'm Fiona, the person that likes organising things like this. And this is Rose, another person who loves organising things. And this is Alison, who um, where's Alison, who set up the Padlet and um, lots of other people who are helping to organise. So I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to ca carry on trying to spotlight all of us and I'll hand over to Rose, who's going to tell you what's going to happen next. Uh, right. So, so hello, everyone. Um, I am absolutely delighted to be here. Um, I'm not usually awake this early, uh, but I am having a great time. Um, and so uh, I thought that the hosts would uh, just go around and introduce ourselves. We've made ourselves fairly visible with our hats, which were torn, but then taped back together because they're a bit easier to wear that way. Um, and uh, so um, I'm just going to say the person's, uh, the host's name. Uh, we've all got a little zero in front of our name, just so uh, we'll be very easy to spot as well. That's also for uh, admin purposes. Um, and I'm just going to say the person's name and if the host could wave and if they want to say something about themselves and then I'll be uh, deferring to Allison for some technological stuff and then we're going to be getting started on the uh, the nerdy chat. Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm going to say Don, can you wave and talk if you want to. Hi, I'm Dawn. Um, I'm living over in Wales, so I've got quite the same time zone problems as Rose. Unsurprisingly, a big fan of John Finneron, basically all of his work, and Rob, see what today brings. And, sorry, fantastic. Thank you, Dawn. Uh, Sam, could you wave and chat if you like? Hello, uh, I'm Sam. Um, I'm from Ireland and I'll be uh, hosting a couple of the breakout rooms. Uh, if anybody is shy about being recorded, come to my breakout rooms because I can't record things. Uh, yes, that's true. And also, could everyone give Sam a massive uh, silent round of applause for somehow managing to call in from a Kindle of all things? I have no idea how she's doing it. Uh, I, uh, okay, so uh, Alison. Um, uh, could you wave and, and uh, I, I won't I won't tell you what I want you to tell everyone about yourself, but you know I think it's pretty cool. Bees. Me. Yes. Um, all right, bees. <laughs> um, I'm Alison. I live on the west coast of Scotland. Um, I'm in my car at the moment on the 4G because um, at uh, 1.30 I've got to teach people how to do beekeeping. Right. Okay, sorry, there's a bit of a technical issue there, but we got the important bit, which is your name and the fact that and, um, uh, I can tell you about the Padlet. Sorry, Alison, we can't hear you. Let's move on, Rose. Sorry about that. Um, as you can see, we're <clears throat> we're all still figuring out the issues. Um, uh, Alison, we've we've muted you. Sorry about that. Um, Deb, would you like to hi wave hi? Okay. Hello. Yes. Hi. I'm Deborah. I'm in the southwest Deborah's. of France. I'm going to be trying to look after you all in the YouTube channel. So if you've got any questions there. Um, I'm going to be there with Philippa as well, and we're going to try and try and get you answers to questions as they pop up. Deb and Philippa wield massive power in the form of the YouTube comment section, which of course is the scariest place on earth, short of 4chan. So we owe them all a huge amount of uh, awe and respect. Salmia, could you wave and say something? 
you're muted, Samia. Hi, hi. I'm Samia. I'm joining from Delhi. It's 3.30 in the afternoon here, and I'm a massive John Finnamore fan, um, which is why I'm here. And I'm delighted, really, really happy to be here. And great to see all of you attend. Let's hope we have a great session ahead. I certainly do, especially because my face is now becoming more and more prominent because I'm doing so much talking. Simon, could you say hi and unmute yourself? Hi, Simon here. Uh, I consider myself a massive John Finnamore fan, but when this series started, I thought he's lost it. What's this about? And it took two or three episodes before I realized that we've been listening to the greatest bit of radio work in many, many decades. Thank you, Simon. Okay, Svenja. Hi, I'm Svenja. I'm from Germany. Um, so if you hear someone talk a bit like Hilla, that's probably me. And um, yeah, I'm, I've become a timeline nerd. I didn't even know I had it in me, but this is sort of how I spent my last five weeks. So anyone wanting to discuss timelines is welcome to join me later on. Thank you, Svenja. Uh, Philippa, could you wave and say something hello and uh, massive hello. Hello. Uh, yes, hello. I'm speaking to you from Manchester today. And now, as Deb said, I will be look up, looking after those of you watching from YouTube. Thank you, Philippa. Mandy. Hello, I'm just outside Bristol um, and I'm with Simon. First episode of um, Series 9, I thought this isn't what we're used to. But um, it was really nice to have something that makes you think, something that you can re-listen to. And there's always something else to discover. So I really enjoyed it. That's absolutely true, in my opinion. Don, could you say hello? I already did. <laughs> I was going to say, I've already done my hellos, but now say hello to everyone again. <laughs> Sorry, Don. Um, Right. Oh, sorry. We've been rearranging the pictures. I'm I'm going off of visual instead of memory. Sorry about that. Okay, so I think that's everyone. Have I missed anyone, Fiona? I don't. I don't think so. And if you have, it doesn't matter. Okay. So lovely. So I'm going to um, Allison. Could we do a quick check to see if your audio is working um, for you to explain? Can you, sorry. Can you Can you hear me now? Uh, I can. Yeah. Could yes, everyone? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay lovely. Great. So um, Alison is going to be explaining to us Padlet, which you all got a link to in your email. And someone is going to put a link to Padlet again on uh, on the chat right now. And now uh, Alison, take a, take a, take a. Okay, I'm hoping you can see my screen share of yep. the Padlet. Yep. Just somebody give me a yeah, yes. Okay, so. Um, Welcome everyone and just a quick um, explanation of what this funny Padlet thing is. It's basically uh, an online pin board or a virtual wall where we can all contribute our ideas, links, nerdy diagrams, photos or um, poems. Any thoughts you have and we've loosely organized it into columns for subjects or themes that reflect the breakout groups that we're going to be splitting off into. As you can see, the first column is family trees. And then we've got timelines. We've got historical references, literary references, a column called Did You Spot, which gives you a chance to share your of the clever, various clever things in there. But Alison, you're uh, a little bit of... Why break. are you crying? So somewhere I'm trying again. Basically, have a look through the columns and um, you can... The, the, the way to add your contribution is to scroll to the bottom of each column and just tap the plus button that you will find at the bottom there, the plus. And then you can add something. Um, if you have any questions about how to use it, you can message me in the chat and I will try to help. Okay, so thanks to everyone who's already contributed. Um, 
if you're worried about anonymity in your contributions, all you have to do is make sure you're not logged into a Padlet account. And if you want to be credited for your contributions, make sure you are logged into a Padlet account. And that's my um, explanation of Padlet. I really hope you've all been able to hear me. And um, the, as for hashtags, I suggest that we hashtag JFSP nerds, perhaps. We'll put that in the chat. Mm. And um, we'll be tweeting on Twitter. The password for Padlet is cockers. With a lower small C, yeah. Lowercase cockers. Okay. Any questions, stick them in the chat. Lovely to see everybody. I'll pass back to Rose. Lovely. Thank you so much, Alison. Um, I, uh, I think your audio came in clear, but uh, as we say, always feel free to message uh, any of us, uh, any of us with the funny hats, uh, because uh, even if one of us doesn't know the answer, we do have a group chat going on where we can, in a panic, go, how do we do this? I need to answer someone. So um, I see the Padlet link is already being shared and reshared. That's absolutely wonderful. Um, so now I'm just going to give a quick little rundown of how things are going to go um, for uh, everyone who hasn't spent the last three nights trying to figure out how things are going to go. Um, so we will be splitting up into breakout rooms very soon. They're going to cover a number of topics. Fiona, would you mind posting the list into the chat? Because um, I think you had that uh, on hand most recently. Um, and uh, so the subject, the subjects are going to be um, approximately um, something along the lines of, you know, family connections. Did you spot? Allison's gone over this. The timeline. What kind of references? Literary and history made me cry. What was that about? A musical discussion room. Although that will only be available in the second half. Um, and unanswered questions, uh, plus um, at least one miscellaneous chat room here in the main room. So for those of you paralyzed by indecision, you'll still be in a room. People will just be talking about whatever they feel like. Um, ah, thank you, Fiona. Now, um, what we will be doing is uh, uh, you will get the opportunity to pick which breakout room you would like to go into. That's going to pop up in a couple of minutes when I'm done talking. Um, and you get to pick where we go, where you go. Um, hopefully, uh, we're going to end up with, you know, no more than 10 people in each room. And we're going to have two such breakout room slots, uh, time slots over the course of the, of the event. Uh, so that if, uh, if something fills up too quickly, you're going to get another chance to see it later. So that way you don't have to have too much FOMO, you know, don't, don't be afraid you're going to completely miss out on a good discussion. And as I say, we're going to try to record as many chats as possible, uh, and put them all up later so that people will be able to see what people were talking about, um, in the rooms where they weren't able to attend. Um, in each room, uh, there should be a host. Um, a few of these rooms aren't going to be hosted, but don't worry, uh, we're going to tell you what to do. Uh, the, I, um, I've asked the hosts to uh, all uh, ask everyone to introduce themselves once you're in, uh, once you're in the chat, uh, in your breakout room. Uh, that way you're only introducing yourself to about you know, nine other people as opposed to 99. Um, and having done that, um, you can just start talking about whatever you feel like um, in that on the subject of uh, whatever your breakout room is. Um, and then at the end of each breakout room, this is going to last for approximately half an hour, we will have a timer going so you can see uh, how much time you have left. Uh, the hosts are going to ask everyone to um, uh, do their best to uh, come up as a group with a special insight. Uh, that they want to share. And then we're all going to reconvene all 100 of us. Um, I don't actually know if there's 100 of us right now. Uh, we're all going to reconvene and uh, share uh, with group re representatives that you choose decide, you know, uh, speaking for all of you. Um, and then after that, I think we're going to have uh, a bit of a break. Um, I'm not actually looking at the schedule at the moment, so I hope that's right. We're going to be doing polls over the break so people can just add in their favorite blank uh, when when they're uh, coming back from their cup of tea. I've just refilled mine. 
Um, and uh, things are going to keep plugging along that way until we get to the end where there will be Christmas crackers and maybe a few fun things in between. Um, so I hope that sounds good to you all. Um, so Fiona, if you can pop up the breakout rooms list now. Yeah. Um, we're going to you're going to see what's available um musical discussion won't be available until the second meeting um i think timeline nerdery will only be available uh in this meeting um we had to double up for host purposes um and for the rooms that don't have any hosts um we will probably send you messages to make sure that you're getting along all right or possibly ask uh someone to pop in and say hello but we will send you a message from the main room in order to uh, check in that you're doing okay um now's a good moment um if anyone uh has any questions could they use the raise hand function in the reaction bar at the bottom of their screen to ask any questions and then after that uh we're going to all split up okay any questions whatsoever no not any questions whatsoever any technical simple quick questions okay fair enough <laughs> That's good. All right, lovely. Uh, I hope I didn't speak too fast or too American. And uh, can we have the breakout rooms, please? Okay. Yes. Um, so it would be nice if we just had a little um, little chat to say who we are, where we're from, what we liked about the show. Um, I'll just kick it off. Just very short, sort of thirty seconds, one minute. Um, I'm I'm Deborah. I'm based in the south of France. I've been a long term listener to John Finnemore since the first cabin pressure episode, and um, I really found this series interesting, challenging, and ultimately really beautiful. So who who would like to uh, say hello next? Hold on. Um, Deb, a couple of people have just arrived, yep. Farron and um, somebody else. So we're doing general introductions in here, but there's 10 breakout rooms with different, um, different themes. And I've just put the themes in the chat. And if you send me a chat, I can send you to one of these breakout rooms or you can stay here and just have a miscellaneous chat for the next half an hour. So James and Farron, you people, you can either choose a breakout room to go to or you can stay here. Back to Deb. Oh, that was it. I was finished. <laughs> just, I was just uh, opening the floor to everybody else now. Would anybody like to jump in and say hi? I will. Can you hear me? Yeah, thanks. Oh, hi, I'm James. I'm calling from a field in Wales where I'm on holiday, so I might get shouted at and have to go inside <laughs> and make make brunch. Um, I'm James. Um, I live in Manchester. I really love this series. And I think like everybody else, I started off going, oh, no, what's he done? He's ruined it. And then episode two, I was like, oh, I think I see what's going on. But I still have no idea. But I really like it. And then by episode four, I was like, Oh, I see what he's doing. Isn't he very clever? And um, so I really enjoy the series. And like everybody else, I suspect I'm a bit of a John Finnamore nerd, which I even listen to all his interviews um, because he's a delightful human. And so I, I, I listen to Cabin Pressure to go to sleep, which I think is <laughs> a nice way to send yourself off in the evening. But um, yeah, that's me. Hello. Thank you, James. Who'd like to go next? I'll go. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, oh <laughs> sorry. Um, I'm Annalisa. Uh, I am in the United States. Um, I'm in Idaho, which you may have never heard of. <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, I stumbled across uh, John Finnamore. I think it was Cabin Pressure. It was probably the first thing I came across and then um, thought, just enjoyed a lot of his work and um yeah i i work as a writer and so i'm always envious of very clever talented writers but also very inspired and so um yeah i and i couldn't pick a breakout room because i just wanted to talk about everything <laughs> and so i was like yeah i i just find it all very fascinating and and each episode as it got in, I just just thought how much more fascinating it was. And yeah, I was really excited to talk about it all. So anyway. Thanks, Annalisa. Who'd like to uh, say hi next? I think I could go next. Hi, everyone. I'm Philippa. Uh, I'm calling from Manchester. 
today, originally from Sweden. Um, yeah, I've also been listening to John Finnemore's uh, programs, all, all of the diff different programs for many, many years now. And um, yeah, I've already listened to this series like three times back to back now because I just can't get enough. But yeah, I thought it was quite odd for the first episode and the second as well, didn't quite pay attention. And then I just, yeah, delved right back into it. And just like James said, I also just listen to everything that John Finnemore does, every interview, because I just, I need more, 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 more all the time. <laughs> Thanks, Philippa. Who's next? I, I am uh, Jerry. I'm uh, located in uh, Pennsylvania in the United States. Uh, I thought that six o'clock a.m. was an ungodly hour for a Zoom call until I heard um, Annalisa speak and I'm dreadfully sorry for your luck. Um, I, I, I'm curious whether it's uh, 4.30 a.m. there or 3.30 a.m. Uh, but anyway, um, 4.30, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, I've been a uh, John Fenimore fan since I discovered Radio 4 and John Fenimore uh, on a trip to the UK in 2011. And uh, I, I thought this was some of the most brilliant genius radio I have heard in my life. Thank you, Gerald. Who'd like to go next? Someone's got a cat's tail. <laughs> Is that a cat, Andrew? Ah, oh. <laughs> welcome to the cats. <laughs> Are we done? Yeah, hey, yeah, um, I'm Andrew. I'm in, I'm in um, Siwatsunejo in Mexico. It's 5.30 and pitch black and pouring with rain here. And also I think about 27 Celsius. So it's kind of a mixed bag. Um, I feel a bit of a fraud because I've actually just spent this week just listening to, just listening to, 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 the, to the episodes like back to back, just to try and get caught up so that I could actually make it onto the qualify and answer the questions to get onto the call. So um, yeah, I just finished my second listening, you know, just before the call started. So it's, all of a sudden it's, it's just amazing how it's all just suddenly started to fall into place. You know, it's like I, I realized that there's a focus on the individual characters and that on each on each episode and and everything else. So it's very very clever. And the only my daughters would, would love to be here, except BTS has a concert at this exact moment. And so the rest of the family got up at four thirty a.m. to go and watch a K-pop band um, performing. So <laughs> it's all go here. Okay, thank you. Um, anybody else like to say hello? Hello, I'm hello. Caroline. Um, I'm in East Anglia in Ely. Um, yes, I'm not sure what people have been saying because I was in a smaller breakout room, so I've just returned to it. Um, oh, well, we're just going through some little, uh, little hellos so we can get to know each other before we get yeah. into a little bit of chat. Thanks for joining us. Have I missed anybody else who would like to say hello before we move on? Last chance saloon. Okay, I'm going to uh, I'm going to hand over to Fiona to uh, whatever we're going to do in our general miscellaneous room. Okay, then thanks. So basically, I think what what we did with our little planning thing yesterday was everybody just threw out our favourite bit. Um, and I think that's a really good place to start, either a favourite bit or something that really excited you or something that absolutely astounded you. And I think mine was yesterday, I suddenly realised that the Frenchman with the walrus poem had the mutual friend was Spencer Minor and the walrus poem was one of those poems. And, and then when Newt said, um, did it work? And he said, well, I'm here, aren't I? And it took me like three weeks to work out what that meant. And it's sending shivers through me now when I think about it. So that's my bit. Also, I love the way he talks about um, we're, a, um, we're a Jewish family and just because I'm Jewish, and we, it just throws it in without having it being a plot device or anything. It's just really great. And all the, the gay stuff as well, just throwing it in, not as a plot device, but as a just throwing in loads and loads of different things. Okay, anyone else want to talk like that? 
I love the way he does that mixing of um, people's different lives and experiences and ethnicities and sexuality because it, it, the way he does it, it makes everything inclusive. Yeah, the disabilities as well. So yeah. he, he doesn't even mention that the guy's blind, really. They just talk around it and it just sort of carries on. It's a really lovely thing, isn't it? It is. It's warm and it's inclusive. And I, I, I think that somebody said he, John Finmore comes across as being just a nice human being. And I think that's, uh, that sums it up. I think it's demonstrated in the way he writes those pieces. Yeah. Did anybody else have a, a, a favorite moment? I know in, uh, when we were talking about this as sort of organizers, we all had several moments that, that really either gave us shivers or made us a little bit weepy or, or, or whatever. Does anybody have a standout moment? Uh, I'll talk about a bit. The, I think there's, I, I haven't unpicked it. I mean, I spent an evening with many, many sheets of paper and maybe too many bottles of wine. And it was a really enjoyable, so <laughs> it felt like my A-level history exam where I was just trying to write everything down. I was trying to draw pictures. I don't know why I started drawing pictures because that's not quick. Um, and so I was trying to do it all live. And um, so the bit I haven't unpicked is within the different, the music's not there by random, is it? And so there's, you can see the traces going through, but um, the the song he made up, or is it, Car who makes up the, the music for him? But anyway, um, when they're singing on stage, uh -huh. this, sorry? Susanna, who, who, do you mean his musician that he works with? I think her name's Susanna. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is it, Susanna. yeah, Susanna, Susanna. Yeah, she's amazing, isn't she? Yes. Um, um, but the, the song on stage is all talking about their, relationship so um it's the the fellow on the cello yeah. but then the the bit that they don't refer to she's singing to the to her partner on stage in front of everyone and the song is also trying to be a soprano versus trying to be a baritone or something but that's talking about trying to be pretending to be a different gender on stage as well and I just thought that was amazing because I was like, oh, you're telling the audience. So in, in the time period that it was, they must have had all the best time behind at the back of the stage going, ha, 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 ha. We're basically <laughs> telling you what's going on and no one's watching. And he just casually skirts over that and then yeah, moves on. And it's amazing. I was just like, oh, there's a whole, there's a whole movie in that alone. <laughs> James, if you like the diagrams and, and the maps and all that sort of stuff, like you say you've been doing, we've all been doing exactly the same thing, you're going to love Padlet. I don't know okay. if you've had a chance to look on that yet, but no, there's I'll, so I'll many things on there that I think will we'll, we'll chime with you. <laughs> I, I think in the final episode, you know, where finally you get like what the real connections of everyone and then when they're all riding in the car uh, together and you have um, the five generations sitting there together and they sing the song, the, the Nightingale song and they're, they're all singing it. And so he just brings it all together. And then the hat, you know, <laughs> you're like, oh, that was the hat from, you know? And so that was just one of those like, like, I, I just, I want to, I wonder, you know, what was the, the scene that he thought of that he's like, oh, I have to write this series about this family and, and weave all this together, you know, was it the hat or was it the little boy or was it the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or was it, you know, what was the thing where he's like, I'm going to, this is it. And now I have to build a whole series around it or you know did he come up with a fellow on the cello and from there just weave this story about these two women and the I don't know I, I just wonder do you think it started with this since you asked me for a story and then when who's that yeah guy? like okay this is where that came from I loved the Cinderella story you know and she's like put your hand down <laughs> you said I didn't do anything I know but you were thinking again <laughs> partly know. Partly he says on Twitter that it came, it came about be literally because of, um, I have some people come back from one of the other rooms. It came about um, because of the COVID, because they couldn't do proper programs. Yeah, yeah, I know the, the format 
yeah. was out of necessity, but I wonder, you know, what was the impetus for this story and this family? Like, what was like, Excuse I mean, me, sometimes like the characters, the number of cast you had to work with and, yeah. and everything. But, Excuse me. Yeah. I just see that the literary and historic references people have just come back into the main room. Is that, did something go wrong there? It's just that um, I thought I saw on the WhatsApp um, come back to the main room. No, oh, not to you. Sorry, it was oh, just to, it was just to. Oh, I'm really sorry. That was for um, that was for one person who was stuck in the room on her own. So, do you want to go back in again? How much longer have we got, Fiona? Another for another quarter of an hour until till five to twelve. You're kidding. Okay, that's fine. And um, is it okay to talk about sort of questions? And in this breakout, um, you know, yeah, but uh, there's there's now eighteen of us in here, so it'd be really brilliant if you went back to. Yeah, we will. You will. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. We'll pop back. Hey, team, on the references. Let's go back into a breakout. Okay. Sorry, guys. Can I ask a question? What I couldn't work out the significance of some of the stories. So, like the turtle story, apart from yeah. Uh, the turtle story or what was the other one there's a lovely garden and I think the lovely garden maybe was what he's telling the story of he's like this is just a story of it doesn't you know an inconsequential story Aha, uh, what you need is the literary <laughs> reference people because we're oh literary. is that oh god we just missed them <laughs> just missed them yeah. we've already been sent a copy of the rose garden by what's he called uh, by the actual guy who was at the actual christmas dinner that tour the house oh am I james mr james <laughs> Yeah. Mr. James oh. wrote, a wrote a very boring story about a rose garden with a stick uh, in it. <laughs> okay. So that's what it was. I mean, partly it's a place where John can put his sketches in. So there was somewhere to put the um, somewhere somewhere to put the um, magpie counting game, somewhere to put that story, but somewhere to put that really really clever thing about um, the book, uh, you know, about the quiz. Vanessa and the yeah. quiz they're just funny but they fit yeah. that much more funny because it's Vanessa saying it and not just anybody mm -hmm. what was the turtles what what do you think the turtles one well other than the parable of you know I thought there's something maybe about quiet bravery quiet heroes which I thought might be a little bit of a theme of this series but because it was quite a long story wasn't it I was like I know there's something else in here that I can't see. <laughs> Someone on Twitter was saying it's also about letting somebody else take the credit for something that you've made because it makes them happy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the parable uh, thing. Yeah, absolutely. Right. <laughs> so the thing, and I didn't know if this would belong with the literary reference or not, but it was um, when Jerry, when they're playing Scrabble, and he plays the word hocket and and deborah's like no that's not that's not the word and she was just like so frustrated with him and then i looked it up and it's like oh hocket it's a real word i thought he was just making it up you know because gary couldn't you know he's recovering and he was saying a lot of nonsense things but it's it's actually and i'm trying to remember exactly the definition now but it's um it was kind of a medieval form, like style of music. And it's, it has to do with where there's musical, the melody is mimicked in the, the notes are mimicked in the rests. So what is said, basically like what is said in the music and what isn't said is just as important. No. was my interpretation of that and so I thought oh that's kind of what's happening in this series of you get what is said but also what isn't said and it's so it's like this medieval chorus and the person who is singing and the person who isn't singing like they don't sing at the same time and they but they mimic each other in the the notes that are sung and the rests. And I, I don't know, I should have looked up more examples, but 
No, you're right. And that's um, there's some stuff about that again on the Padlet board. I can't remember. Oh, I should have it, looked at that. But, but the, the, no, no, it's OK, because that, that Padlet board incidentally will be there beyond this event. So you've got plenty oh, okay. of time to go and interact with that as well. Um, but uh, yeah, you're exactly right. But the way um, I think it was explained in the uh, in the Padlet uh, time uh, bit is uh, it's it's almost like there are different threads and it's only when the threads all come together that you get the melody. I've mixed up yeah. my metaphors. Threads don't make a melody. Oh, that, <laughs> the, yeah, the, the layers, a good layers work together separately as well as together, sort of thing. Yeah, but yeah, when I when I learned that definition, it was just. I mean, obviously, with anything he writes, there's always layers and layers and things that as soon as you pick up on that. But I was just like, oh, and Jerry was having a hard time explaining what he was trying to articulate it to his daughter and he said no no hawk it and she said no that's not it and even if it were that's not the word but but for the series it was the word <laughs> and, and we just didn't realize because that was very early on in the series <laughs> I'm like wow is this a hawk it <laughs> anyway Were there moments that gave you chills? I mean, that Hockett moment that you referenced, Annalisa, that sort of gave me a bit of a chill when you realise just how complex the whole thing is. And I got, that gave me a little chill. Mm -hmm. And there was um, a discussion, very, uh, I think it was in the final episode where Newt is talking to his sister and they're talking about their sexuality. And it's, I thought it was beautifully written. That gave me a little chill as well. Um, so there were lots of little moments like that where the, the hair on the back of your neck just stood up with the realisation of what you were hearing. I'm sure I wasn't alone in that. Yeah, I think like Fiona said, when he meets the, the man who had been a refugee, probably, yeah. you know, from the war or something. No, a soldier. Like, he would have been a spy, not a refugee. Oh, OK. I couldn't tell if it was that he had helped him get out or if he but oh I know far too much about the, that period of the war. <laughs> yeah. I just watched a film about it last week no these are okay. people who who who, who he would have been a French resistance fighter oh okay okay yeah but that his his poem had saved his life basically and yeah that and was you know, nobody not one person in the entire series could possibly have known what that conversation was about when we heard it. We yeah, could yeah. only have known it by hearing something completely different another time. Yeah. Which came first, actually? The conversation with Spencer Minor or, or the walrus? Um, I, think, I think we'd heard the conversation because we knew he was writing the poems before that. Right, so, so if people were really with it, they could have worked it out straight away. Yeah. I think some people did get it straight away. I didn't, um, but, it, and so the bit in that episode where I was literally jumping up and down in my kitchen and clapping my hands over my head was the conversation with Spencer Minor. Yeah. It's the poem codes. Yeah. Joe like what's your favorite scene? Just throwing out to different people. Joe, Jer Joe, haven't spoken. Do you want to say anything? Can you hear me? I've just unmuted you if you want to say hello. Okay. I don't think he realizes he's in the, uh, in the conversation. The window's probably hidden and, and muted. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> I'm getting through a couple of um, comments on YouTube from Catherine Wakeley. She first says that she loves uh, that Newt lets M Mr. Noon take credit for Vanessa, which I absolutely agree with. I love the relationship between Newt and his sister and uh, Mrs. Noon, and then obviously Vanessa. I think that's dyna that dynamic is really sweet.
we're being asked to um oh hang on oh actually joe wants to be sent to family tree i can do that we're being asked um to all of us come up with an insight that we want to share so that each room will have an insight to share do you think we i just want to say this I, I, like I said, I've, I've kind of binged it this week. I just got put off listening it to, to the whole thing till the whole thing was done. Um, it's just been a real positive thing to come out of Britain and to remind me just what I still love about the country, even though it's been 30 years since I left. Um, and this week has been a bit disheartening. Um, but listening to this is just the, 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 the reminds me that the, the how good people are. Listening to this, was it reminds me of reading Pratchett books in the early days when it was just, just the pure humanity of it. And um, so I'm very grateful that this, the, the, this was done. Absolutely agree with that. I think you've, you've got it for me, Andrew, that, that really sums it up, that word humanity. That's, that's really lovely. Um, I've just always thought he was the most intelligent comedian ever and then this is like and then my sister just think that I, I keep saying it to my sister and my sister says oh no it's rubbish <laughs> well i heard i listened to that thing last thursday but it didn't make any sense and so I went, no it doesn't and then it's actually do you realize i'm hosting a thing with a hundred people who are going to all talk about who will listen to it five times we've had to put up with deferred pleasure haven't we or deferred understanding of it yeah I think something that struck me as I, I was driving this week for, I had to travel for work. And so I re-listened to the first five and then caught the sixth one. So I listened to all of them as I was driving and it struck me how it really is just an ordinary family, you know, even though like they're all extraordinary to us, but because and I think that was something too, just talking about the humanity of and what good people they they all seem and everything. But and that's something that like another thing like with the double acts and and things that that he was able to make that seem like a um, like everyone has a story and it doesn't have to be like okay here's you know, the, the prime minister or the president of the United States or the, you know, it doesn't have to be that, that these are ordinary people who are extraordinary, you know? And I, 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 I think that's something that's very moving. Yeah, because if you just had, the scene about Russ fighting with that bully to get his guitar back on its own in a play, it wouldn't have made any sense to anything. It doesn't right. add anything. And yet it had about five things in it that were really- Yeah. Different. Yeah, when you go back and hear it again, he's, he's saying so many of the things that you see through the generations. Yeah, so there was half, half a glass and- um, Oh, what else was there just well, in that one scene. well first his he, his guitar is really important to him and then he ends up being a musician right and also the other thing is that we find out that his parents are separated yeah during it yeah Any more insights or favourite bits? I had a thought about it, which was that he's done the same thing that he did with Cabin Pressure, and that with Cabin Pressure he took a sitcom and made it not be a sitcom. Um, it, it, the characters become so real that they, they outgrow the sitcom and they're not trapped there anymore. Mm -hmm. And here he's, he's done it with the sketch show, that he's he's basically reinvented the form and he's done it in a way that's about the characters and the relationships that they have with each other. Yeah, 
It's true, and he's done that during a time of adversity as we all go through the coronavirus. And sometimes those are the events that just remind you that the only thing that is important is, is other people. So the, the, um, what he's written chimes very much with, with things certainly that I've felt through the, through the virus, through the epidemic. And it's a meta dialogue about itself because it's about the virus as well. Mm. Shit. Um, Sam, you've got your hand up. Hey, are we sharing insights from the breakout group or when everybody comes back? Are you still doing your own discussion? No, this is the own discussion. The breakout rooms haven't closed yet. You've just come All right, back. You, you said come back, so our group is back. Oh, sorry. I stupidly said come back to one person when she was lonely, but what's happened is that two groups closed because of that. We apologize. The groups, there's still another couple of minutes left in there. But anyway, don't worry, no. just relax, chat. Don't actually know how to put my hand down. I can. I can do that for you. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> I, I particularly love just how absolutely densely layered the writing is for this. So it, it seems that as many times as one listens to each episode there's always something new to grab onto something new to connect to some other episode some other skit it's just, just a, a maddening bit of genius there jerry's speech in episode six is like that because you've you've had it's it's it pays off two sketches doesn't it it pays off the the scrabble one where he's recovering but he's not and it's easier to work out what he's saying but he's not all the way recovered yet but also we've already had the 10 years earlier sketch which has a perfectly lovely payoff of its own which is we don't know we didn't see that coming about teaching crows to bring you batteries um so it, yeah it's, it goes in two directions at once it's beautiful I missed the beginning of that, but I just wanted to say that for my lockdown one activities, I personally started uh, befriending the crows in my local park. So uh, I sort of deeply fell extra in love with Jerry at that moment. Okay, the rooms are now closing. They will close in eight seconds. Everybody will be back very shortly, at which point I've got an exciting announcement to make. And then we're going to hand over to Rose. Yes, we, we will. So. After my exciting announcement, when uh, everybody's yes, of back. Course. Okay, so let me just wait till all the rooms are closed and everybody's back. Yes, all the rooms are closed and everybody should be back. So the first thing is that um, I've got an exciting announcement. The second thing is Rose is going to just go around all the rooms getting an insight. And third thing is I'm going to set up a thing called a Mentimeter to ask people for your favourite scenes. And while you're on your break, you can fill that in. So the first exciting announcement is that um, John was here at the beginning to hear our introductions and was really moved by it all. And he's gone off for the moment and he's going to come back at one o'clock to answer our questions. Yoo-hoo! We're now best friends on Twitter, it turns out. Um, so that's been quite interesting for me this week. Um, and over to Rose for getting insights from each room. Uh, lovely, yes. Um, I hope that that was uh, clear for everyone, especially you brave souls in the unhosted rooms. Um, and uh, so effectively, um, insights that you gathered from getting to finally talk to other, other people about this show that you've been you know, dwelling over for the last six weeks, um, except for one person who apparently binged this all starting three days ago, you're incredible. Um, I don't know how you managed to fit all 12 re-listens in that time. Um, uh, now, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm hoping that each group managed to find one person willing to share their insight. Um, and now uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have to pull up the list of which rooms we actually had open because my memory is like that of a goldfish. And, um, and I'm just gonna ask, you know, what insight would you like to share? So let's start with, um, uh, let's see, uh, timeline nerds, who, uh, what, what do you wanna, what, what insight do you really wanna share from your room? 
So uh, less an insight, but uh, Jamie wants to present his brilliant timeline and just to give us a quick in, uh, insight how it works because it's really amazing and everyone should know about it. I would absolutely love to see that. Um, can we set it up so that uh, Jamie can screen share? Yeah. Okay, lovely. Are people oh. able, can people see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Great, I'll drop the link in as well. Um, I've, uh, I'm a computer programmer by trade. Um, so I decided what I wanted to do when I started recognizing all the connections was make a website about it so I could explore it, like see where the characters show up, where how, how the themes cross over, everything like that. So um, you, so it's well that since that you asked me, but if you go to just as well, like since you ask.me, it redirects there. Um, but yeah, so the idea of the website is it has everything. And I've sort of, I spent a lot of yesterday transcribing this because I built the structure of the website, but I kept on putting off the actual hard work of uh, grafting through each scene. So that was uh, most of my day yesterday. But yeah, you can um, see it all in broadcast order or you can see it all in chronological order, but then you can also um, dig into individual characters. So if you want to see everything that's happened with uh, Newt, for example, this is all of Newt's timeline tells you what age he is in each scene, tells you how he's related to people in the scene. Um, or if you want to find out uh, why is Kazoo linked and it'll tell you that Newt got a Kazoo in his cracker in 1899, which he gave to Jerry in 1943, which Jerry uses for the ritual of the Keepers of the Keeps Cakes of Pan in 1966 and so on. So yeah, um, more or less just wanted to share this as a resource with people that you can use to, to explore things um, as much as you want. Um, I've got that as many amazing. links as I can find, but we'll see. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. Jamie, that is jaw dropping, and I hope you're actually checking the chat because we're getting a lovely chorus of people saying how cool you are for doing this. <laughs> I, I hope I hope John gets to see this uh, when he comes by, and uh, I've definitely uh, opened it up in my own window. So I hope you're prepared for a fair bit of traffic, and I really hope you've put this up in Padlet Padlet as a link so people can come back to this later. Uh, yeah. All right, lovely. So uh, if we take off your, uh, your screen share, but uh, uh, I imagine everyone's now opening this in another tab. Um, uh, let's see, I, I, I know this is gonna be a tough act to follow. Thank you, Jamie. Um, but would, uh, would anyone from uh, obscure real world references, literary and historical, uh, feel, like, uh, feel like sharing their, uh, their big insights or any particular insights they liked? Who's doing the talking? I am. Hello, Lizzie. Hello. Um, so we we had plenty of things to talk about, but uh, the the thing that was decided on and why I'm doing the talking is I live on a narrowboat. So I everyone else was like, when Long Buckby came up, we Googled it. And I was like, <laughs> it didn't occur to me that. Not everyone in the world knows that Long Buckby's the last train station on the Grand Union Canal for some two weeks worth of boating. Um, so um, yes, we talked about that and uh, the the idle women, as they were called, so the women that worked the inland waterways, and they weren't actually called idle women until after the war. It was sort of made up as a backronym for the inland waterways badge they had. Um, they weren't actually given extra rations, so they worked incredibly hard because there's a lot of locks um and because they had a powered boat they would have had a the powered boat and then their butty um and all the locks there's like 21 locks up to birmingham which is where they went and you they're all narrow locks so you have to take the tender up first and then the butty um so you have to work all the locks twice and because you can't tie the butty to the powered boat you have to haul it up yourself um so yes they they would have worked incredibly hard and they definitely wouldn't have smelled of violets can confirm do not smell of violets <laughs> that's uh, that is so cool that you managed to relate your personal experience to this part of the show and then getting to share it with everyone that is both awesome and generous of you and i'm really glad to get to know a little bit more and uh i suppose you might not always smell of violets i I think that that's <laughs> under the circumstances. Um, we do have a shower. <laughs> congratulations. 
<laughs> I, uh, I could go off and complain about my college accommodations because our showers aren't fully up to par, but uh, that's, that's not anything to do with the show. Um, so moving along, um, let's see, uh, let's see, do we have a family connections, family tree uh, person wanting to talk? Uh, do yes. we have uh, Chun Ho from Cardiff, uh, from our group, uh, will just say a few words if we can unmute him. Absolutely. He can um, unmute himself. Chun Ho, are you there? Ah, uh, yes, I think so. Chun Ho, we, I see you're unmuted, but I can't hear you. Could you say something? Uh, for a moment, just to check. Can you can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello, hello. Hello. Um, if I just quickly share my screen as well, because um, I, I I made this um, um, family tree and I tweet a post tweeted it, and uh, I think what it got liked by John Fenimore and Ed Morris, so it got more attention than I know than my normal tweets normally would. Um, but yeah, uh, I, we, we had a lovely discussion uh, about the family tree. And uh, I think we concluded that they, one of the insights we, we gathered was at the last scene on the last episode, uh, Vanessa calls Jerry an ass. And then Jerry says, well, it's all in the genes. And we've, we've concluded, we found that uh, it actually is all the, all the five main characters, Russ, Deborah, Jerry, Vanessa, and Oswald are connected genetically. So that, that was our that was our insight into it. That's lovely. Um, and also, I do hope that if you haven't already, you make sure to put the family tree up on Padlet. Uh, oh, yep, yep. Uh, it's a great heartwarming thing to me to see just all of these different projects coming together. Um, my own family tree is much messier, but I do want to share. When I hadn't figured out Hilla's name yet, I had her down as Flipster Goldfarb. Um, so that that was my own note taking thing. I think I also had Benji down as Eggman up until I re-listened for a third time. Um, now, uh, with that, let's see. Um, uh, made me cry. Do you want to depress us? Slash heartwarm us too much. Too much. Well, I've paste, pasted something on the chat, but we were quite a small group. So thanks to Kate and Claire, and then Ellie who joined us a bit later. But we did come up with a few things. Half a glass, the mummy at the end of the, the birthday peon. And we did cry a bit was the brief of our group really um but we, although we've written something for the chat posted this towards the end we decided we could have written something else that the whole family they do fall in love very hard and very quickly so that made us blub a bit more that that's it <laughs> Yes, that's, that's an extra thing. I think Newt managed to use up all of their sort of reasonable asexuality, a, a romance. Uh, and so the entire following four generations have to just fall over, oh, head over heels very quickly, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rich, you're doing a hand wave. Is that is that from the chat? Uh, or uh, did you have something to say? Okay, cool, cool. Um, okay, let's see. Um, now, uh, let's see, Made Me Cry, Family Connections. Uh, did you spot, that was my group, so I can be mean. Jennifer, come talk for us. Hey, everybody. Um, so we really, really loved the Top Hat timeline. Um, initially, we thought that Jerry's confusion over Newt's rewearing the Top Hat at Vanessa's funeral was because it was so old but actually in the very final episode, we discovered that it was because Russ had been sick in it earlier. Um, so we thought that was great. Yes, indeed. I think, uh, I think everyone uh, can enjoy the top hat, but I really do enjoy that, you know, the moments where we think we've already gotten the full answer and then suddenly, suddenly an extra, an extra level comes up rather similarly to, uh, you know, uh, well, rather like, rather like with the whole uh, the Nightingale song, you know, I thought it had already been resolved from the second episode onward, but no, there was a lot more to find out. Um, all right, so let's see um, who's left. Um, what was that about the group? Uh, what was that about? What have you got? More question words. Well, we had a very small group as well, uh, but uh, and we, so we've got rapidly and wonderfully off topic. It was great. Um, but if we had, a, had an insight, I think it was that John Finham was built up a huge fan loyalty base that all of us had this, yeah, the first one was good, oh, it was interesting, different, no, I'm not sure, but uh, the second one, we started to get it, third one, now we're in love. 
uh, but it's the fact that he has built up that trust in, it, in an audience that he can play that he can do that that's very special I, I totally agree. And uh, honestly, if everyone just wants to wave their hands right now on screen, if they were mystified after the first episode, uh, I'd love to just see, because I was so confused, my goodness. Um, uh, I think I think the first episode had a good balance, I suppose, of a little bit of, um, a, a little bit of, uh, y you know, some of the more sketch-like scenes, such as the, uh, the peer pressure funeral. Um, and then, uh, and then it just got more and more complex. Okay, um, I'm already going way over time. So let me see. Uh, did anyone from unanswered questions have an insight? Hello. Hello. Uh, um, yeah, we had a good chat. Can you hear me? Okay. Chev, are you talking? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, like, yeah, we had a good chat going around in a lot of circles <laughs> um, for there are many unanswered questions. And yeah, our basic insight uh, is probably uh, much in the same way as uh, many of the characters in the series that there are some secrets that uh, will never be told, uh, but that John's writing is very much genius. <laughs> That is very true. Okay, um, and now, um, how many miscellaneous rooms were there actually? Uh, Fiona, do you know this? Did we just have the one? Oh, Sa Salmia. Yeah, we just had the one. Okay. They start started off with um, two people, went in another one, and then they came back into ours. Okay, lovely. Well, does miscellaneous have any miscellaneous insights? Deb, do you want to say? Deb? Sorry, sorry, I was in YouTube. Um, no. <laughs> I'm going back to YouTube. <laughs> let's, let's move on. Okay, is that it, Rose? Can we move on to... Yes, yes. we're running a bit okay. late. So can okay. you... So I would like to move on to a pee break. I desperately need to move on to a pee break. But before I do, I just want to get you to do this. So I'm going to share this screen. I want you all to... Well, it's the pee break. Um, I want you to go to menti.com and use the code 870-2981. I'm gonna write that in the chat as well. Um, and put in, answer the question, what was your favorite scene? And hopefully that should work. And we'll be back in five whole minutes. See you shortly. Um, now, uh, so uh, same as before, um, I will I will try not to do the uh, the Jerry with the COVID speaking too much thing again this time. But what we're going to do is uh, all um, all pop back into uh, more rooms, um, second breakout rooms, and we're going to have a, have another little chat. It'll be for approximately the same amount of time, half an hour. Um, and uh, you can pick a different subject from before so that you have something else to talk about. Um, and um, I, I just want to check, will the, will the Menti link show up later? Uh, do, you want uh, to, do you want to have a look at that previous one that you've already done? Uh, yes, I mean, if you don't mind. Um, I can send, yes, I can send that round to everybody. Okay, hey, lovely. The other thing, in these breakout rooms, what would be really good is if each of you um, come up with some questions that you'd like to ask John when we come back. Yes, uh, so if you just have that ready by the end, um, and, uh, and then we're going to move on to possibly some of the most exciting things we're going to be doing. Okay, lovely. So Fiona, can you pop up the, uh, the link? I mean, the breakout rooms. Yeah, um, we weren't going to have timelines in the second round because we haven't got a host for it and there's nobody recording it. But I'm just thinking that maybe you nerds might like to go and talk to each other about websites and HTML, whatever. I, probably HTML is really old fashioned. Um, so I'm leaving it open. But if anybody in there would agree to record it for us and send um, and we, we'll tell you who to we transfer it to, that would be really great. So I'm going to set this one. Um, that needs to be for half an hour this time, doesn't it, Rose? Is that right? Please, yes. And uh, and do introduce yourselves to everyone again when you're back in the chat. Let's uh, get to know as many people as possible today. Okay. And if anybody stays, in, uh, we'll keep about ten in the in the main room to chat about anything that you like, if you want. 
So let me know. Again, if you can't find breakout room icon on your phones, iPads, laptops, or whatever, just shout out um, what you would like to do. Hello, everybody. Um, it's It's been really nice to, to have all the interaction so far. Um, I'm Deborah. I'm based in the southwest of France, um, a long term John Finnemore fan since uh, the very first episode of uh, Cabin Pressure. And um, it's been really nice to be a part of this event today and to, to swap all these different ideas with everybody and to, to, to find out so many more layers that I hadn't considered that everybody else is bringing with them into the conversation. So that's really welcome. Um, who would like to say hello next? You can't be shy now. I, I can say hello if you like. Yes, please. Um, I'm, I'm Debbie. I've just been in the the timeline breakout room with Paul, actually. Hello, Paul. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, say hello. I too have been a, a fan for a while now. And it's only just recently that I've noticed on other Radio 4 uh, comedy programmes um, that, that um, how much more he's been writing for other people and other programmes. And I never noticed before, strangely enough, but now you hear his name popping up all the time. Thanks, Which Debbie. Nice to see. I hadn't noticed that. Um, I've been a bit disconnected from Radio 4 for, for a few months, so I, I'm gonna watch out for that. Um, who else would like to just quickly say hi? next if you like. Um, I'm Paul, I'm in North London. I've been a big John Finnemore fan, I think sort of round about from the beginning. I'm absolutely adored having pressure listen to it all the time and I think I've listened to this series now. I think I've listened to it four times. I would have done it more actually, I didn't have time, I had a really busy week. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I'm going to go back, I sort of from the first episode I started writing a spreadsheet um, just so I could pick out where things were, what the what the date line was, how old each character was that we heard. And I wrote Family Tree as well. I'm a big Family Tree fan. I've, I've traced my own Family Tree and several other people's as well. So uh, well suited me. But I wondered sort of how, how many other radio programmes do you do a family, a family tree and a spreadsheet timeline for? Not many. <laughs> I think that's exactly true. I completely agree with you. And I wouldn't do this. I was thinking a couple of days ago, I wouldn't do this for any other writer. But because I trust him and I know he's, he's quality and that no word is wasted, I, I knew it would be time well spent. So I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. Who else would like to say hi? Oh, have we got anybody else? Hey. Uh, yeah, we've, we've still got a few... Say hi, introduce yourselves. Hi, I can say hi. Uh, sorry, my video went, went for a bit. Uh, my name is Philippa. I'm one of the hosts. I've lost my hat, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm based in Manchester and I've loved John Finnemore for yeah years and years. First fell in love uh, with Cabin Pressure. Listened to that a lot and then just caught up with all the uh, souvenir programmes. Absolutely love this series as well, or this season as well. For, um, find, found it quite hard to get into at the beginning, which I think many of us did. But as someone mentioned earlier, because it's John Finnemore, you, you stick with it and you give it a chance. And yeah, highly rewarded in the end. Absolutely love it. Thanks, Philippa. Philippa and I are also sort of doubling with looking after the YouTube uh, channel. Oh, right. So we, we get every now and again, we get a little question in from there. So we're trying to make sure that everybody feels nicely included. Um, is there anybody else who'd like to say hello? Um, or, or are you being shy, which I completely understand? Everyone's being shy. I was a bit, um, a bit envious of all the people that ended up going into the I, I want to call it the cry room. What was, what was it made me cry? Yeah, it made me cry. Me cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the crying boudoir, um, because uh, I think there were loads of moments that, that gave me tingles, that, that brought a little tear. I just wondered if other people, uh, obviously a lot of other people do, because everyone disappeared off into that room, I mean, like, but I, I was just curious about what other people uh, got affected by. 
Yes, it's interesting, isn't it? That once again, this is something that we're, we're sort of not really used to from John Finnemore. It's sort of a lot of his stuff is the sort of things that make you laugh out loud. And, and some of this was a lot more poignant. And um, yes, there were sort of some of those moments that were you know, really very sentimental, that, that worked so well. There were quite a few of the characters when they would, they would just say a little thing and you just wanted to be able to put your arm around them. Yes. And I don't often feel like that in comedy yeah. programmes. I felt like that about the character of Newt. I just wanted to kind of hug him all the time because he was so kind of innocent. He was kind of just there in the background and he was kind of the most important person in the whole programme in the end because he's the reason that everyone uh, yes, existed so. in a way. Yeah. Yes. But they're all very well drawn. I mean, Jerry, Jerry is absolutely adorable, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. yeah. The thing that, that when you said that about his being adorable, the thing that made me so upset was the teacher not letting him watch telly. Oh, yes. <laughs> that was That's when he was I mean, he's just kind of that innocent kind of little boy still, even though he was an old man. He just wanted to watch the moon landing. Yes. He just wanted to be that little boy who looked up to the flying men in their flying machines. Yes. I love that, that comment about, I, I wasn't consulted about the time. That was one of yeah. those so unexpected. Yeah comments yeah yes and wasn't it so nice in, in that scene it's it's very understated um but we know it's, it's there's, there's another female speaker in the room with him so it's not just a, you know an old old man with a couple of school girls in that room there's sort of some there's, some, there's nothing dodgy going on you know? <laughs> <laughs> and i think it's very understated but it's there it's there with miss uh, miss so-and-so i can't remember her name now i've got it written down somewhere mm. You can see that situation happening, can't you? And you can just see it in your mind's eye. Yeah. Some some teacher coming along and saying, ah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> can't be doing that. Yes. I think that one of the things we haven't actually talked about, even amongst us organisers, I'm not aware that we have, is the performances as well. Because when we're talking about those little moments that affect you, I really loved Laurie Lewin. I think it's in the final bit where he's he's wanting to be sick and I thought the way he characterized that and, and portrayed a little child was just yes. beautiful yeah yeah who's your favorite character Ooh. mine's Jerry's wife mm. Hilla, yes oh Fiona you're muted oh my very favorite line in the entire six things is I don't I don't mind doing the flipping flipping I just don't want to do the flipping chanting yeah, yeah that's, very, that really that's very clever for a second language user but but then but then it was written by an English person and spoken by an English it's... actress with a German accent but her accent is 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 very good it's very mm. very good brilliant yeah yeah we got some German family friends and it's, you know, that even they said it was really good. Well, they, they would be the people that couldn't hear it. I mm. think, just as a linguist, but, but yeah, he's, he's got a lot of German connections. I was just listening to, um, what, that two-hander thing that he wrote years ago, last week. Double acts. Double acts. Mm -hmm. And there's quite a lot of people who are German. They, she was, she, one girl was in Germany. Somebody had a German mother. So he's got a lot of German connections. So he must have a good idea of the rhythm. And he's got a really good sense of vowels and accents. Did anybody see the, um, the article in, um, the, the recent article in Big Issue when he wrote about Spetwith isn't a real place because Yorkshire people are very specific about their vowels. It's, it's funny you should talk about accents because I, I mentioned it in the timeline. Mm. I have to say, I thought his Australian accent was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it his Australian like, accent oh, famously bad? Yes. <laughs> it, uh, it reminded me a lot of that cabin pressure episode yes. where he was pretending to be Australian. Yes. And I just, and now I'm thinking, now, was that a pretend comedy accent or was it just a comedy accent because he couldn't do it? <laughs> I have another comment from YouTube from Catherine Wakeley. Um, she feels that the contrast between Ross's openly gay relationship and Susanna and Gally's having to be so discreet was really moving, which I agree with. Um, I think he said in that 
big issue interview as well that he's kind of he didn't want to make a big deal out of the same sex relationships because it was just it was handy for the cast but it's also kind of just the, what it should be the norm kind of these days that same sex same sex relationships have always um, existed and they were still there and just it's natural in a way which I feel yeah Ross is being openly gay mm -hmm. it was never kind of well there was a somewhat rushed uh, coming out moment wasn't there rather mm -hmm. than Susanna and Gallis was also kind of just they never really specifically said it was mm -hmm. kind of just hinted at and then very obvious in the end thinking, sorry am I making any sense thinking about that you know that Debbie Deborah all had always <laughs> known well I presume that um Mr. Nightingale, the Gallis mum and dad, had always known, but in a completely different way. They weren't yeah. allowed to know. It was meant to be invisible. Yes. And also, I think in the in the um, the duet, the musical duet, doesn't Galli take on the male role anyway? I think I'm pretty sure. Well, she's, she's, saying. A, she's a male impersonator. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In the style yeah, of exactly. Bernie and Bertie, she, yeah. Yeah. And he'd done some real, some big historical research on that because somebody on Twitter who had written a book about a couple that were male in, that did that mm. act said um, they were tweeting each other about the book and he said, yes, I went to them, but also I could looked at Hetty somebody or other. He'd just mm. done research on everything. Yes. Well, I think there wasn't there in the 1920s Berlin, wasn't there a lot of um, in, the, in the burlesque shows and the nightclubs, there was a lot of entertainment with um, cross-dressing anyway, I, I, I believe. So I think that, does that fit with the timeline? I can't remember. Yeah, I, I, um, I did a little look into that and I put some stuff on Padlet. I don't know if you've had a chance to have a look at it. I think it's under historical references because I found there was quite a famous uh, turn of the century music hall act uh, where where there was a, a male impersonator and she was really famous. So yeah, it does seem to be the yeah, best 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 known. Yeah. Didn't Julie Andrews do a film? Yeah, Victor Victoria. Victor Victoria. Yeah. Yes. Uh, wasn't it? Was it based on that character? I don't believe it was. I think so. uh, no, I think I think they they were just part of the music hall acts of those days. So really then it, it was accepted even then just not talked about yeah i guess it would have been wouldn't it and theater yeah. would be a good way for people to earn a living by by living and 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 live their honest lives i guess it gave them opportunity to do that and you hear references you know when you read read books like i don't know um agatha christie or pg woodhouse and they all talk about oh being in the theater and how people being in the theatre are slightly eccentric and slightly odd and yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah, what are you covering up if you work in theatre? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a good question has uh, been popped on YouTube. Uh, it's a question for John Finnemore, so I've just copied it onto Padlet as well, but it's a question about writing chronologically and then deciding what to put in each episode or structuring each episode first. And it is a bit of what came first, was it chicken or egg? I, I can't imagine how he even began to mesh it all together. Mm. That's a good question, yes. Yeah be interesting because he he's popped references from each episode into every other episode hasn't he yes. and it's really very interesting indeed how he's written it is that true every single one yeah, well certainly i mean take take the take the dog song mm. i can't think of an episode that hasn't got the dog song in it in some shape or form and of course jerry's sayings jerry's sayings are littered throughout the whole thing yes Yes, that's true. Half a glass. Mm. You hear in the <laughs> very first episode, the second or third sketch. 
and even even when he was um he'd obviously had a stroke and he was getting his his words mixed up and when they were playing chess he was saying you know he normally says onwards and upwards he said something mm. like um backwards and forwards yes yeah yeah something yes. like that yes yeah, I've been struggling to interpret uh, what his speech was. We've got a uh, translated, well, we've got a, a copy of the speech on, on one of the mm. Padlet timelines. Uh, I think it's under any other information. Oh, and some, of, some of us have been in there trying to, trying to work out what he was actually saying. Because mm, I must yes. admit, the first time I heard that, I just thought, oh, it's gobbledygook. But obviously it wasn't. And, and as soon as you realise, even if you just get two or three of the words, it's quite, it, it's one of those little gasp moments because you think, oh, he really was trying to say something. It made total sense to him. Yes. I wonder if he's, he's had experience of um, somebody recovering from a stroke and to, to know those, those um, linguistic things that happen and how, how words that you used to know uh, are just scrambled slightly. It was yes. just really interesting. He said somebody on Twitter had found some correspondence that he'd, did anyone else see this? He'd asked five years ago to some neurologist that uh, he said he was writing, a, 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 writing something about somebody with aphasia um, and wanted to get some ideas about the words. Right. Interesting. Did he did he write the whole thing during lockdown? I know he's made reference yeah. to, to it coming out during lockdown, but is there any hint of earlier research for, for like you've just said, you know, he was asking about that. So is there any hint of long term research happening in the background? Well presumably he's been this is there's a question right there. Write that in your in the questions for John. I'll to Padlet. <laughs> I don't know. Do you remember when he did the cabin pressure lockdown? Um, oh, it's cabin flu. Yes. Was there any, yeah. was there any, I'm trying to think if there was any sort of clue in there that he was doing something else. Not that I remember. No, I, I watched those. I don't I don't recall. Anything I think else. certainly the puzzles that he did. Uh, are quite interesting yes and maybe that is reflected a little way in the fact that we have to work out what's going on in each episode yeah. and you have to listen to it all again to work it all out yeah. did you know that he he's one of very few only three people to have cracked some in, incredible intelligent literary code it's quite famous jawbone. Yeah. yeah yeah didn't someone say that he writes crosswords yeah no, i saw the, that the times yeah. or something hmm. Yes. I've just put a thing in the chat for everybody in the breakout rooms. Um, if you've got any questions for John, write them in the Padlet. We've put a column on the right hand side of the Padlet for questions for John. And then he can just go down it and choose it because we're on technology here. <laughs> Another comment has come in from uh, Twitter where apparently Simon Cain said on Twitter that Jerry knew exactly what he was saying. Mm. That oh yeah. Speech. Oh yes. Yeah. Jerry did. <laughs> Nobody yeah. else did though. <laughs> <laughs> no. I feel even though you couldn't quite understand what Jerry was actually saying or wanting to say, you could still feel it in a way. You could hear through the kind of, yeah, the tone of voice. Exactly. It, was, it, was very, yeah, it was a very affectionate speech in many yeah, ways. Yeah, definitely. You could hear when you got that from the way he was saying it and from the reactions that the others were giving. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but yes, I hadn't thought of that. Yes, of course, it's quite important that the performer who's doing it must know what it means. Yeah. <laughs> because they've got to know how to say it. I thought they were all terrific, the, the whole group. Yeah. I know they're good anyway, and I know they've worked together for many years, but mm. I really thought that the vocal talent that came out in this series was superb. It's yes. really nice to see how each one takes on a character and how that character develops over time, rather than normally in, in uh, the souvenir programme, it is literally skit after skit. Mm. With some exceptions, I suppose, the, you know, since you ask me, etc. But it's, it is mm. really nice to see how those characters develop. Do we I hope he does is... another one. There's certainly enough characters to do it. Yeah. I, hope, I hope another one comes of it. Mm. Do we think that the um, since you asked me character is Newt? Was he always Newt, that character? 
No, because he was a dodgy old man in a club in the souvenir <laughs> program. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be far too far too well planned out if he'd had that <laughs> from the beginning of the souvenir program. Yeah, but it would definitely be funny going back and listening to old seasons of um, souvenir program with new to kind of mm -hmm. in the back of your mind. You listening to the yeah the storyteller in a whole different yeah. way, maybe. Yeah, yes. I, I thought you would. Yeah. I'm going to listen to double acts again as well and see if I can spot any seeds of characters that might be in in this uh, in in this series. Yes, yes, there might well be. Having spent quite a lot of hours with the organising group over the last two days. I've just discovered a whole load of new things that I didn't know at all. Um, so one of them is, like an owl? No, the answer to that is like a nightingale, because there was an old thing like the owl and the, an old poem, the owl and the nightingale. Right. So maybe that was what he had in mind, but are we overthinking it? <laughs> maybe we are, yes. Um, <laughs> But somebody, oh, him, somebody, imbuing John Finnemore with powers he does not have. <laughs> but, but he has so many powers, like anything that anybody knows about, like the idle women and the boat, boat, everything. There's yes, the, the poem, the poems, the, the codes, you know, everything. Yes. I think if it was any other writer, you'd say we were overthinking it. But because yes. it's him, yeah. yes, but because it's that. him, we're probably not. No. Yes. I mean, one, thing has been really yes. bad. one thing that's exercised me. <laughs> is um, Gally's name, though John Finnamore said in, in Twitter that, that Gally was a nickname. Mm. Um, and I wondered if her first name was actually Angeline, as in Angeline the Nightingale. Mm. Well, I think it's Newton and Galileo. Yes, that's, that's the theory, it's yes. The next series, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, yes. We hope he gets another one. Yes. In, in the big issue interview, he said, I think he said that there was an explanation where the nicknames came from, but, um, but they'd be right, cut, yes. cut for time, yeah. Mm. Oh, somebody on, uh, on YouTube is saying, so this is Suman Biswas is saying that John has written crosswords in the Times under the pseudonym Emu. Oh, right. I think Suman Biswas knows John very well, mm. she says okay. pointedly. Okay. Um, somebody else comments, this is Catherine Wakeley, uh, says, I've been wondering if since you asked me, man has always been Mr. James. He did say on Twitter that He's often used some of Mr. James's stories, so he felt he needed to pay him back by including yes. him in this. All oh, right, that's nice. Wouldn't it be great to have your mind analysed by a hundred nerds? <laughs> I know. Yes, so on MR James, have we all read The Rose Garden? Oh, yes, I read yes. it yesterday. Yes. <laughs> Somebody in the a... previous chat was saying, What's that story got to do with anything? Well, <laughs> since you asked me. Since you asked me, yes. <laughs> yeah, there was a um, program, was it last year or the year before, about M.R. James and, um, like, I can't, uh, but, but I, 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 well, I can't remember whether the conclusion about, or, you know, the, the way that was presented, was he, whether he was um, uh, jovial in the, in the sense of the, uh, the narrator is. <laughs> Oh, right. um, or, yes. or whether he was more an austere. I, I think he might. I think he may have been. I think. I think that um, uh, you know that it was a um, you know that he wasn't an austere person telling sort of seriously scary stories. He was a um, uh, uh, a chap with his mates, you know, sort of uh, uh, telling an, 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 uh, you know, uh, uh, a riveting story.
I've really heard that. It's my dog's just woken up and shaking himself. <laughs> I'll put myself on mute in case he shakes anything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, one one question that I don't I don't know we know that could be asked, John, is um, you know, given that people have had to go away and write websites to define the timeline. <laughs> And, and family trees and things. Did did he think that the um the re, the, the 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 audience would be able to keep track of it, <laughs> or was he deliberately making it um uh, uh, something of a challenge? Yeah, he said on Twitter once it's not meant to be a quiz, but I think it is. I think he's wrong. I did this for one other book, which was the um, spring, summer, autumn, winter novels because that's got links all the way through it. But I've never done it for any, so I got a big graph out. I've never done it for anything else. I think it's one of the things that I like is that we're given credit for being intelligent listeners. Yeah, uh, and it also works if you're not. Yeah. <laughs> Although it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't work unless you listen to all six of them, but you don't need to, you didn't happen to have to know about mm. those, that there were only six women that worked on the canals. Mm. You didn't happen to have to know that that was M.R. James. I didn't know. Mm. Hello, can you hear me, please? What was that, Paul? Okay, the rooms are going to shut in 12 seconds. No, they're not. The rooms are going to shut in a bit. <laughs> so everyone should be here soon. In fact, I can... I'm going to close them now, and it'll take a minute for, the, for everybody to get back here. So Hi, it... um, just dialing in, just dialing in. Okay, he's muted now. Okay, so we'll just take a few minutes for everybody to get back into the rooms. I mean, from the rooms into the main room. And then... Has everyone put questions on Padlet? Or yes. if anybody's got a question that they can't get onto Padlet, put them in the chat and Rose will put them in Padlet. Is that OK, Rose? Thank you. And I've got another amenity for people to do. Uh, just uh, while Fiona's setting that up, what we're going to do is set up another menti poll and then take our uh, second break. Is that right, Fiona? Um, and we can uh, we can do the, the menti poll as we come back and then we will move on to um, to I, I think uh, figuring out our, our questions, right? Is, is that right, Fiona? Yeah, so basically I'm gonna, um, here's the next menti. I've put the question, I've put the link in the chat. Go to menti and use eight three, nine, five, five, eight, nine, seven. So when John comes back into the room to answer questions, he will be faced with us all having gone off to the toilet and a whole load of appreciations. So as long as I don't change my screen and start us sending WhatsApp messages like I did last time. Um, so does this work? Would anybody like to put something in that should start coming up now? Just waiting for the first word to come up. Yes, that's working. That's great. Okay, so yeah, so let's have a five minute break now if somebody wants to time it. We'll be back. And when we come back, we can start with the questions. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. My timer has gone on now.
quick question, Fiona, if you're still there. Um, I can't share the um, the audio when you're doing the screen, right? Or is there a way and I could play some music in between? If you'd like. That sadly is correct. Okay, thank you. Then we'll just do a little empty thing. Thanks. Anyone want a cup of tea? Yes, please. <laughs> Definitely, yes, please. Well, let me step it. Is there a new Menti code for the for the new thing? It's not in chat, is it? Eight it is three in the chat. nine five five eight nine seven. Please, please again, and then I'll type it. Eight three nine five. Yes. Five eight nine seven. Oh, Andrea was faster than me. Thank you. It is in the chat. Thanks. Like I said before about the time, if you if you click on um, options next to your sharing Fiona's screen, you can make it bigger to read the words. Uh, just a note, um, we'll be putting screenshots of these uh, um, Menti messages on Padlet later for everyone who, like me, can't see all the tiny little words yet, but wants to make sure they read everything. Um, uh, yes, uh, sorry, going back to unmute before the uh, timer finishes, slurping my tea. That was your five minute timer. We're back on. And it's a pleasure to see all of these little messages coming up. Incidentally, just because I, uh, I'm not sure if anyone's actually done this, but has anyone uh, come up with a, uh, a poem in the style of Newt or Jerry um, and, 
uh, if so, uh, do you feel like sharing it or are you going to uh, hide it somewhere on Padlet? Fiona, just so you know, you're still screen sharing. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, so if anyone has a poem and they want to, uh, they want to say, um, oh, Deb, could you put the YouTube link in the chat for Jamie? Um, and uh, just to, if anyone wants to use the raise hand function, just to tell me if they have a poem available, uh, all the merits will be given to anyone who does. But uh, we realize that, oh, Ali, wonderful. Um, so let's see, uh, does anyone want to share before we move on to the final sort of events of the, uh, of the day? Uh, Ellie, you can come up first. And uh, I see there's a couple according to Chris and Padlet. So if anyone wants to share uh, or read the ones in Padlet, let's have, let's have one live poetry reading. And uh, Ellie, oh. take the stage. Oh, so th thanks very much. Oh, um... Uh, it is very silly, but I because there's no there's no stakes of winning the war. I, I put it in the format of a sonnet, <laughs> and my dad is here. He's very embarrassed. Um, <laughs> so it's called Sonnet for Season Nine. Uh, well, and I'd just like people... to say this is the oh. most brilliant sonnet I've ever heard. Sorry, back oh, no, to you thank, thank you, Fiona. No pressure. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well, since you asked me for some poetry, the sonnet seems the way to pay tribute. To honour Wilco's and their family tree, and not forgetting darling Uncle Newt. A story with such tenderness and grace, the mirror shows us all that's old is new. Our history is written on our face and lingers on in little things we do. It's hard to sum up what it means to us to hear such full-formed people on the air. No family failing shared by Gal and Russ. You need not feel sexual desire to care. What is there left to say? Much more. But now I'll stop it. Thank you, Finnamore. My goodness. Um, yes, we're all we're all applauding it <laughs> as we can. That is astounding. Thank you. Thank I you. Have put that up on Padlet, right? And in the chat. Lovely. I've posted uh, it in the chat as well because it's just so lovely to read. Yes. Um, I, uh, I I do hope that uh, that will be uh, something that we uh, we all get to see uh, or or hear um, or possibly revisit when we get the recordings. Um, I certainly want to listen again. Um, and uh, yes, did anyone else want to share, um, share any poems? Um, because I really think anyone who put in the work deserves the, deserves the attention. And then after that, we can move on to our next steps. I would love to share some. Um, huh? They're not mine, they're my friend Joni's, and but she, couldn't manage to join, but I would love to read them out because they're just awesome. And let's see if you all can spot the references. I'll ask the king for memory. That's how the small fish plotted it. But once he got to Neptune's cave, he found he quite forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a goldfish poem. Sorry, was that a spoiler? Hmm. <laughs> and another one. A candle glowing in the night. My fellow moth appears so bright. But careful, lest you act the loon, it may not be the actual moon. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. Um, so uh, okay, I'm going to take over now. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, share my screen because we've got a, um, our special guest. So if I can get this right, let me just share the right bit. Um, not very good at sharing the right bit, sharing the wrong bit usually. Okay, so sharing the right bit. Um, here we go. So this is for you. Um, it might be a bit small and um, it's lovely to have you here. It makes me cry to think about it. Um, this is what we've all put in just to say that um, all of us have just spent the last six weeks writing graphs and making, trying to work out what on earth has been going on. And there's lots of questions, but this is a short message of appreciation for you from all of us, and we will let you have this. So would you like to unmute and make mm -hmm. your, um, put your video on and um, I can invite you. Hello. Half a glass. <laughs> <laughs> Half a glass, everybody. Um, how lovely to uh, to see you all. Um, 
I should stress that I have not been here the whole time uh, because I felt that was slightly intrusive uh, and I wanted you just to be able to discuss without either thinking at the time or in retrospect that I've been looming over you. Uh, so I haven't. I haven't heard your discussions. I was here right at the beginning to hear the introductions and then I left you to it. Um, but uh, <laughs> I am overwhelmed by all the effort you've made and um, uh, and my host is asking me to start my video. I thought I had done that. Uh, you already started your video, it's uh, fine. I don't have anything prepared to say, just hello and thank you so much for your enthusiasm and your warmth. Uh, you can imagine how um, nerve wracking it was for me to do something so different um, and not uh, through choice, but because of a series of decisions that all stemmed from not being able to have a, a live audience and it ended up with this uh, ridiculous thing. <laughs> and then uh, as uh, I'm sure you probably know or may have felt yourself, the first one didn't um, set the world on fire. <laughs> um, and so that was a nerve wracking moment. And so to watch basically from the third on people finding it and loving it to the point that you are uh, prepared to come here on a sunny uh, Sunday afternoon or whatever it is, wherever you are, um, rather than enjoy the sun is um, en enormously moving. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, I am here, the charts behind me, uh, my versions of your charts, which I will happily show you, uh, or I will answer your questions, or um, yeah, I have nothing prepared. Tell me what you would like from me. Hello. We've got yeah. people have been pasting some questions into our Padlet, and one of the organising team is going to read some of them out. I sent you the link, and you could look, but it's it's more fun. Oh, that's great. It's much more. It's much better if someone sort of. Uh, so we can read some of those questions out, and then when we run out of those, people. People, people in the 62 people can shout out theirs, but we'll start with the Padlet ones. So um, who's who on my organizing team has got the Padlet in front of them? I have, but I've done a lot of talking, so. Well, you start with one, Rose, and then we'll take somebody else. Okay, great. Well, um, I noticed that there are lots of, uh, there are likes so we can see which one's been liked the most. So let's start with why Mrs. Tiggy Winkle? <laughs> so um, some questions I'm going to be evasive about either because I don't know or because there's more than one answer or because there's an answer that I do have but I'm not ready to share or for various other reasons I would just say uh, you know who can say and I think I'm gonna annoyingly I'm probably gonna start off with that because I think if there is more life to this which I hope there is if I explore these characters more then I, I certainly think we'll be hearing more from Patrick and uh, how, how and why Mrs. Pettig who knows, maybe my why Mrs. Diggity Wicker will come up. So there's my first constructive answer, not telling. <laughs> Thank you. And that's also a very good caveat to give all of the guests now. Um, so this is a perfect- uh, But it's also fine to ask me anything, so long as you don't mind me occasionally saying, um, uh, who knows, in a smug, uh, um, what was it? A, a, a mysterious old goose manner. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna cut in as, as big host, so I get privileges. Um, and I think on Twitter ages ago, somebody said, is it just a throwaway, this thing? And somebody else said on Twitter, no, nothing with John Finnemore is ever just a throwaway. <laughs> so, so the question is, are we overthinking it? Does there have to be a meaning to miss every single thing? No, um, there isn't. And indeed, sometimes I put some, put some things in kind of deliberately thinking all well, the way like you know not everything's about family not everything you know i want parts of this i don't know alan for instance when russ says um oh have you been talking to alan i was gonna make i was gonna make that ben and say oh let's say uncle ben's gay as well and so that's who deb would turn to and then i thought as i say no, not everything's about your family alan is is a gay friend of deborah's who we never meet never hear of but it's just to give it a bit more texture similarly i deliberately didn't put any more reference to deb's sword fighting you know, that's another part of her life. If I get to explore the family more, maybe we'll find out how she got into that. But, it, you know, that's something she did not get from the people we've met. Maybe she got it from Hiller's family. Maybe she got it from a friend. Maybe she just found it for herself. So no, not everything is significant, but obviously loads of stuff is. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, if we uh, if we keep on sort of uh, intertwining like this, I'm going to ask another question from Padlet. Would there ever be a possibility for a live show about the Wilkos? I 
so I don't, uh, I, I'm not being evasive when I say I don't know what the future is, except that I definitely feel like I don't want to stop writing about these characters just yet. So I don't know whether that means another series like this one. Uh, and if it is, I don't know whether I would explore these characters deeper or whether I would explore other characters around them. I wouldn't start again with another family, but I might, you know, so I might take another branch of the tree or I might take the secondary characters of this. I, I considered that every actor had a primary and a secondary character in this. So for instance, Margaret, so Deborah and Hilla. So I, it certainly occurred to me that next time I could do Hilla, Patrick, Alex, uh, Walter and Galley, but I might want to do something else. So I don't know, uh, or I might adapt this in a different way. Um, certainly a stage show has occurred to me because that would be probably the best medium for having people play if I go the route of sticking with actors playing multiple parts and wildly different ages of their same part. That's something you can kind of only really get away with on radio or on the stage. If I go another way, you know, if we have a larger cast, we, uh, yeah, again, short answer, I don't know, but I hope there is a future to this. Thank you very much. I'd just like to note, note that Ed Morish has shown up on the chat, welcome. Um, and, uh, and then let Fiona take the next question from Padlet. Bev's going to read that out. Yeah, okay, we've got a question from Alison Durbin, who asks, when Vanessa described what was happening in the Western movie for Walter, were they on a narrow boat? No, no, they were at home. Oh, I see, because of the hatch thing. No, I, is that maybe why they thought that? No, um, my gran had a hatch between the kitchen and the dining room that she would let down to put the tea things on. Um, so that's what was happening in my head there. I did uh, for a while, have a version of Vanessa's story where Walter died earlier and she moved in with Queenie, either in a, on a narrow boat or possibly in a lock keeper's cottage. Uh, but then two things happened. One is I felt that was all a bit, you know, neat. And as I say, people's lives aren't necessarily all about one thing, just because she was into, you know, she, the canals were a huge influence on her in the war doesn't mean she'd always therefore want to spend all of the rest of her life on a canal, although she does move into a, uh, a, uh, a, a town on the canal, but still. And the other thing was, um, uh, I heard Laurie do Walter and realised I really liked him and I didn't want to kill him off <laughs> so early. I, uh, so uh, yeah, I gave them their happy retirement. <laughs> and indeed the honeymoon scene came after uh, I first heard Laurie do Walter. I think Lo Walter would have been a much smaller part had uh, I not enjoyed, what was the first thing he did? Uh, I think it might have been the, the 60s Christmas uh, or it might have been the, um, the blind scene in the final episode. Uh, think, oh, I want to hear more from him. <laughs> the question from Anonymous, who is Alan? Aha, did I not just answer that uh, by accident? Yeah. Good. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Another Anonymous question. Uh, series nine opened with a different bit of Do It Your Own Way by the Voodoo Trombone Quartet. Uh, was this to signal to the listener that this would be something slightly different or just because RBQ did the same thing with Scherzo and Trio earlier this year. And I really wish I'd had time to read these in a <laughs> That is a very, very nerdy, obscure, quest niche question. Yeah. Uh, no, it, is, um, it was entirely because we wanted to signal that this was different. And of course our theme is so kind of big and jolly and trombone and loud, and it suits a loud, you know, big studio audience cheering after it. And we used to, you know, when we announced it, we say, this is your open world souvenir program and people cheer and that's great. This one, we couldn't have any of that. So we thought we'll have a quieter version of it, but it's still the same a track. In fact, it's not even a different version of it. It's later in the track um, as a signal. And I also thought of changing the name of the show um, to something like Open the Mills Family Album. But then I just thought that there's too much of the show in it you know the cast being the same the, the since you asked me is i don't want to say it has grown out of the show it, it still is the show in that it still is a sketch show i've just restricted the type of sketches i'm writing for it so that's why in the end we went we, we kept the title and i go back and forth on it but i think because i do think it created confusion at the beginning and i think people were disappointed naturally that they weren't getting what they tuned in for but i think on balance i was right to do that because I would have, you know, I'd have written it differently if it had been, if I'd made a departure and, and, and written a new show. Okay, thank Final you. Final question we have on Padlet is from Jill. Uh, it was one that was raised on the YouTube channel. 
Did you write it chronologically and then decide what to put in each episode or structure each episode first or some other way? Um, some other way, I suppose. I, I certainly didn't write it chronologically um, and I certainly didn't plan the episodes in advance, except that I, well, the structural parts of them, you know, the, 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 the three Christmases and the, story, the parts that um, affected the particular stories of the, of, of the week, I feel I, I sort of consider each episode has a sort of quiet storyline of its own, like um, Newt's war work or um, uh, Jerry's marriage, you know, Jerry's love affair. Um, but then, of course, we explore other parts. Of, so I put those, the three or four sketches that made up the story of the week in. I put in the sketches I knew had to be there for structural reasons in. Um, and then, yeah, I wrote all over the place. I sort of went back and forth and explored bits and I changed things. Um, Vanessa's character changed uh, quite a lot, um, quite late. Vanessa was a sort of spikier, uh, still, I hope, lovable, but less obviously lovable and fundamentally sort of negative. And, and actually the bit I took away, the, the part I took away from her character and then developed her character into something uh, that I think what well, Bobby and Carrie think is much better, but I took the sort of reflexive negativity that comes out of nervousness, which is what I wanted to explore with the original version of, not even that character, the person, uh, she was even had a different name, she was called Edith. And so when Jerry's mother was Edith, I wanted to explore her appearing to be a fairly formidable uh, matriarch, but actually it all comes from, from fear. And so it's just easiest to immediately shut everything down. So I gave that to Patrick. Um, and I think it almost works better in a man. It feels more unexpected. It's certainly in a Victorian paterfamilias to say, no, he's just scared. He doesn't know what to do. He wants to impress his friend. And so when he joins in with the pun at the end of his first sketch, I hope you yeah, get that. And then, uh, yeah, so uh, where did I come in with this? Yeah, um, that's uh, certainly not chronologically. <laughs> it's my answer to that one. <laughs> Okay, thank you. I'm going to step in now because I think that one of my group members actually had a question that was uh, similarly related. So, Annalisa, if you don't mind stepping up and asking your question, uh, are you feeling bold for that? For that? Lovely. Unmute, please. Sure. Um, I was wondering what, I know you had to change the format because of limitations with the recording and everything. What was the impetus for for this family or for this, you know, like when I write, I have like one scene or that I think of, and then I, I want to write that. And then I kind of have to write around it. Or was it, what was the first thing you thought of that brought this project to mind? Like, was it, I, the newt telling the teenage hero turtle story to Russ, or was it, these two women having a double act in the early 20th century. And then you're like, I want to write this family saga from there. Or, you know, what was the first linchpin that brought about this family for you? Well, uh, yes, I, I suppose I do have an answer. I thought I didn't, but in fact, I remember <laughs> that I do because I wrote a, it doesn't come out of, but the seed of it was a, 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 a series of sketches I wrote for the souvenir program, oh, as far back as maybe series five or six, um, about a family called the Willoughbys who were, you know, who were versions of the Wilcos. Uh, and uh, and they, they, they were a very clannish little tribal family and they were enthused, hugely enthusiastic and also a bit unaware of how obnoxious they might sound to others and so there was a lot of oh who could name their favorite element and uh that sort of thing mm -hmm. and they, uh, there's a scene of them in a restaurant all peer, uh, pouring over the menu in a race to find misprints and, and rogue apostrophes and that kind of thing and uh we really enjoyed playing them uh and we i think we, we did it in front of the audience uh which not all of my sketches get to the actual recording but these ones did and it went down well and we could definitely have included it but i never mm -hmm. felt quite it just, it didn't come out the way I wanted it to because I wanted it to come out the way that I think the Wilkinsons have come out where you're so fundamentally on the side of these people and the father is making, well, all of them, Hillary is just as much part of it, even if she doesn't always want to do the chanting. Uh, the parents are, you know, this is a, <laughs> a lovely tribe to be part of. And yes, Jerry's a bit of a buffoon, but he's not. Uh, the, the broader character, the Willoughby character, um, 
a while, I just it came across as just me making easy jokes about um, upper middle class, high achieving parents. And that's, it, it felt like a more of a caricature. And that's because I didn't have time to explore it. So when, so now then, so there's that. And then there was the whole story, which I, 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 I told before, at least on Twitter of, no, which I'm I won't say in, in uh, length, but no audience meaning, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, all of those decisions I took, which led to connected episodes, which led to, okay, well, this idea of, I suppose the first, the, the theme was, or the structural thing was, was going back through parents each time. And then I thought, well, well, what family? Oh, that's right. And then I thought, okay, but it's a comedy show. So I made the decision about the backwards chronology, which again, I've explained on Twitter. I'll happily explain it again if people want. But uh, I also made a decision that these should fundamentally be happy families. And then, um, and I said this in an interview in The Big Issue, but there's a line of told stories about all unhappy family, all happy families are happy in the same way and all unhappy families are, are different. And I just thought, well, that's not true at all. <laughs> I mean, happy families are just as, the ways in which families are broadly functional whilst not perfect is really different. So I was interested in creating households and families that all fundamentally work uh, in their own ways, but would absolutely not suit one another. Uh, and then I thought, well, one of those should be the, the, the willow bees, and I'd have I'd have a chance to explore them and show that why they weren't just a joke. And that was the seed of of Jerry. Uh, so he probably came first, which is probably why he's in the middle. Mm -hmm. And another seed, um, or, or more generally, I should say, another thing I did was just have long interviews with the, the cast, one on one Zoom interviews with the cast about what they would like to do, what characters they most enjoyed doing, what they felt they'd never got to do on a show before or what they did do on a show before in some cases, but, but always felt most comfortable and loved doing. How we all, I asked them all how it would feel to be married to all of the others. <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, so that which created some of the relationships going, oh yes, you're right, that is how you two would probably, because of course we know each other really well now, we've been doing it, we were, um, I was friends with all of them before the show. Some of them also knew each other before the show, but we've been doing this show for 10 years and we've done two tours uh, or rather one tour over two years. So we've been traveling around the country together. You know, we've, there's a lot of dynamics going on. So um, there's a lot of, and well, it's not as simple as to say there's a lot of each of them in the characters, but a lot of the characters came from them. Thank you. Um, I believe Simon has a question for you. Hi, thanks. Uh, I have a question. I was asked a question in our group and I gave an answer to it, which I hope, John, you can tell me whether I answered correctly or not. Uh, it was about the meeting of uh, Susanna and Newt uh, at Crew, or maybe their first meeting. And can I start by saying how absolutely wonderfully that was handled? Uh, I was expecting something like that, uh, but couldn't see how it could be made to work. Uh, at at six thirty on, uh, on on Radio Four, and er everything about that was just was just wonderful. Um, it was in Crew, and and we a lot of people uh, are, are not from uh, from the UK, uh, and these folks were from the US, and initially thought Crew meant kind of crew of a boat or or, or whatever, uh, and eventually I think after googling realised it was a, a place Crew with an E on the end, and that's why that was chosen. My answer was. It was a kind of a central railway hub. So wherever uh, Midnight and Noon were performing uh, and Newt was, they could get to there uh, uh, on a regular basis reasonably easily. And I'd like to know if if that was your rationale for choosing crew. Uh, yes, take five merits. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, also, I tried to, um, whenever I had a one-off location and it didn't much matter where it was or it could be, it needed to be in a seaside town or something like that, and otherwise it didn't matter, I tried to pick one of the venues we've been to on tour and we, uh, we played crew. Uh, so that was a secondary reason, but the primary reason was absolutely that is where a lot of um, uh, variety artists and um, you know, any and actors actually in general uh, would would meet up uh, for whatever purposes, maybe <laughs> not not necessarily uh, rendezvous of the noons, but uh, it was a convenient place uh, to come from wherever hey. you could be playing because it's almost everywhere links to crew. Can I add then that there's, there's been a fair bit of debate in, in sessions that I've had about uh, Vanessa not knowing uh, that Newt was her father uh, and trying to square the fact that she accepted that it, it had been this mythical uh, uh, Captain uh, and then Major Noon, 
rather than uh, anybody else. But on the other hand, uh, she and, and the women in that family are just so good at reading people and understanding things based on the smallest bits of information. Uh, I think I disagree with my son about whether she has an inkling of it or not. I'm tempted to think no, he, he, he thinks probably. Well, that's something where I'm going to say, um, who can say in a, in a sort of different manner of, uh, I even I, when we played that scene, Carrie and I discussed, and so I'm talking about the scene where Vanessa finally asks, uh, in, in old, you know, in relative old age, she's probably in her 60s, um, uh, finally asked the question. And so Carrie and I talked about as exactly as you say, she's no fool. How can she not? She'll, she's had her whole life to work this out and we know she's brilliant at it, does she? And I think there's, um, uh, so in, even you know, in our playing of it as actors, as well as uh, my writing of it, I think it is possible to read it either as her accepting this because there are incontroversial facts about it, like that she does look like Susanna and, and et cetera. And yeah, maybe it was. And also maybe, yeah, she, maybe this is her way of inviting Newt to talk about it before one of us dies, if he wants to. But also I'm your niece, you're my uncle. My mothers were my mothers. We don't, I don't, it, it, yeah, I, if you, I think if she get, if she got signals in that conversation and also did he pick up, he's no fool either. I think there's a lot of unspoken, I, I don't think, I uh, certainly allow for, more than allow for the possibility. Uh, and as I say, I did both in my writing and in my performing of that scene, that there's an awful lot of unspoken and agreed, you know, uh, mutually happy agreement of, okay, fine, let's play it that way. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now, Chev, you've raised your hand. Uh, so could you could you uh, ask something next? Ooh, hello. Is this working? Yes. Hey, um, it's kind of half a question, half just a thank you um, in terms of like, yeah, like just this series gave me so much kind of of the representation I've wanted to see like and hear, especially on like mainstream radio as someone who has grown up listening to like you know around the horn and things like that and just seeing mm. more of things um so yeah especially like Susanna and Gally and the kind of ace representation in Newt as well was just kind of really special so thank you um and yeah I kind of why the like music hall and like where did that come from and like what sort of research did you do into like them as a double act and things uh, well, firstly, thank you very much. That means a great deal to me. Uh, that is something I wanted to do, but without being, you know, I hope with all of the things where I touch on, on things that on, on either identities or, or just circumstances that are very important to people, I didn't want it necessarily to be all about that. You know, with, uh, it doesn't, Russ's, character, Russ's story is very little about him being gay. It just that happens to be about, there's a really only one sketch in which it's relevant and then the others, you know, the sketch is with Alex. Alex could just as well be female. And I, so I wanted to do that, but I also didn't want to ignore, certainly going back further back into history. Well, I'm not just going to say that everything's always been fine. <laughs> so good. I'm very glad you felt that. And of course, as a, um, you know, as a straight person, I uh, was also a little worried about just charging in gung ho. And uh, <laughs> um, I mean, I've written gay characters before, and I, I certainly feel that writers should be able to write characters of, of uh, Anyone should be able to write anything, but you've got to, you've got to you know, you, you therefore owe it to uh, the people you're writing about to, to try to, to get it right. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, yes, musical. Um, uh, yes, I did a lot of research and I've always been interested in what well, comedy in general, musical and variety is part of that. Um, and uh, in particular, um, there is, well, male impersonators, uh, Hetty King, I read up a lot about, and the, um, there's also a double act uh, they, they, they sort of didn't go by surname plus surname. They were always um, uh, uh, Gwen Farrer and Nora Blaney, uh, who are very close in some ways to uh, to um, uh, to, to um, Gally and Susanna, um, even down to playing the piano and the cello, uh, which I was delighted about because our series has always had a pianist and a cellist, indeed a female pianist and a cellist, although not together. Uh, and so to find that, yes, there was indeed in the 20s when you want there to be a uh, as out as it was possible to be, which is not entirely out, but pretty damn out, especially for Gwen, 
uh, a musical act who played who um, toured with a piano and a cello. So that was. I haven't fantastic. heard of them, so I'll definitely have to oh, now you go and uh, you'll look enjoy them. them. Alison uh, Child, I believe, is the name of the author who has uh, who, who wrote the main book that I used as my research. But also, I think four or five of their songs are on Spotify, so you can listen to them straight away. Uh, and they're good. They're funny. Nice. As well, I say that I, I don't mean that patronizingly. I mean anything a hundred years old has struggled still to be funny, and I, I think this is you can, yeah, uh, naturally it's dated, but you can you can hear how funny it, it, it was then. Okay, I'm gonna, thank you. I'm going to come in and say follows on. I've got another question that I'm reading off the Padlet, but this follows on really well. I just think um, when you took as a as the Jew, I think it's great how you do Jews. Um, done some, <laughs> done some stuff about Jews. I love that. You know, there's not a plot device. It's the same as the as the blind guy and the gay people. It's just in there. Throws. Yeah, it that's in. what I wanted to do. Just have characters, and then say later on. By the way, Walter's blind, or by the way, you know, Hill is Jewish, and therefore. Everyone who follows is where's you know, where's the hat? We see we wear these silly hats because we're Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. The other so the question that was on the Padlet, but I thought it is: is this true, or is it just something that you're using that they know but you don't know? Is there? And I know you spent a lot of time with Sherlock Holmes or Benedict Cumberbatch, so it might be true. So is there a reason that you could tell that somebody was either widowed or, um, or, or divorced because of the biro or the reading glasses? Frustrating. Who can say? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Um, now, I believe we have a question uh, that Don will be presenting from the, uh, the musical discussion group, who I think... Uh, will uh, have been underrepresented a little bit lately. So, Dawn, please go ahead. Yep, hi. Um, basically, the question was, which version of Woof 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 came first, and how do you manage all the evolutions of it? Yeah, that was... Uh, <laughs> uh, that was a struggle. That, 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 I, um, uh, that, that took a while. Um, what was the first version of it? I think... I, well, I, I mean, it, it, the idea was always for there to be three versions. So it, I was, when I was writing it, I was writing it as a three-part song, as it were. Um, and so I think bits of it sort of leapfrogged other bits. I would say probably that, but naturally you, you start with, well, what's you know the starting point? And I wanted it to, I wanted to have some sort of light thematic relevance as well, rather than just being an absolutely, you know. Uh, Newton, um, Jerry's poems are more or less absolutely random in their subject matter because not everything, again, not everything should be a clue. Uh, but I thought, well, for a song we're going to hear three times, I'd like there to be at least a light level of meaning when we hear it for the third time, which would be the first time it was written. So I think I probably started with it as, I hope, not a clunky metaphor for Galley's position of uh, a uh, <laughs> someone who is called Nightingale and uh, is in a world where she's expected to be a nightingale and would uh, be uh, would much prefer to imitate dogs and is also much better much better suited to imitating dogs and discovers happiness when she starts imitating dogs. So as I say, that saying it out loud to you like, like that would, um, makes it sound extremely on the nose, but I haven't had people say that to me. So I think in performance, <laughs> quite as, it feels like a silly song about a bird impersonator, hopefully. Uh, uh, so yes, that was probably the first impetus, and then I wrote, uh, rather like the whole show, I wrote them. Uh, the th I wrote the three of them at the same time, and it nearly broke my brain. <laughs> and uh, uh, and then Sue did, uh, you know, wrote this incredibly beautifully catchy earworm, and she, and her uh, collaborator um, Tim Horton, uh, Tim Sutton, I mean, um, uh, arranged it, and Tim is absolutely. A genius. At, I mean, I think the way that the middle one sounds like doesn't sound. It sounds like a fan of the a a, a, a a someone who likes but doesn't fully get the Beatles and likes the jointed bits of the Beatles in the sixties trying to do the Beatles. I mean, he's just absolutely <laughs> that. Um, and in the nineties really one, I said to Sue, um, I was thinking of something like when the, you know, when I was thinking about well, how why would the band do this? Go oh well, maybe they covered the whole thing like uh, Divine Comedy covered um, I've Been to a Marvellous Party and I said that to Sue and then she and Tim came back with what sounds to me like it could absolutely be off a late 90s Divine <laughs> Comedy album 
Uh, and I don't know much about music, but I know, yeah, uh, at all. Uh, but so yes, how they do what they do uh, astounds me. <laughs> Lovely, thank you so much. Um, thank you for asking that, Dawn. And uh, my mother is going to be thrilled because she actually came to me saying uh, that the, uh, the, uh, the nightingale singing the dog voice was about being queer and uh, I didn't quite believe her. So she will be so pleased to have caught that. Yeah, about being queer, also about being a performer and finding your performance voice, because is that about her as well? I don't know whether she would be trans if she lived now. I don't suppose she would know if you asked her, but at any rate, she enjoys her, you know, the, the male impersonator, which as you probably, I'm sure you know, is, was not a rare thing at the time, was you know quite in vogue and, and that's, that must have been when it clicked for her when she went oh yes I can do that on stage and everyone will enjoy it and no one will think I'm being no one will hate me for it because that's the thing at the moment so yes it, it's about that <laughs> the last verse is about that thank you and if you ever get a look at the chat there's a lot of uh, queer outpourings of love going on there oh thank you well that so does mean a lot of, I'm aware I haven't talked about the aceness uh much but uh people have I I did not anticipate how um I've been very moved by the messages I've got about that. It uh, uh, so yeah. I, I, I thank you. <laughs> I'll do you a saved version of the chat as well? Ah uh, yes, a saved version. Now we. Oh, lovely. Have... Thank you. That would be great. Yes, please do. Now we've had uh, so three people waiting very patiently for a little while. So Morris, you were first. Could you ask your question now, please? Thank you. I'm going to uh, thank you. I'm going to cheat and ask two questions, but you only need to answer one. <laughs> um, uh, well, thank you very much, of course, for the series. So my two questions are, two, the, this really strong idea of family traditions, does that actually come from your experience in your own family? Do, do you have fa did you have family traditions which inspired you to do this? And my second question is, how did you find the confidence in your listeners to, to, to believe that they, were going to, that they were going to stick with this? I'm just astonished that, the, 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 that you had it and that it worked. Uh, okay, well, um, the traditions question, I mean, don't we all, we all, there's all, uh, even, I know, I don't, I don't, we don't have anything as, you know, the Wilkinsons are, in particular, that middle family and, and Wilkinsons and associated tribes uh, are particularly fond of that sort of thing and the hat ripping and so on. So we don't have, enough, we don't necessarily have things that are quite that marked, but we all have little, you know, certainly our, my family, we all have odd little jokes and things we don't even know are jokes things we just take for granted I, I which is how I think of things like half a glass that Russ doesn't really know that's a family tradition he certainly doesn't know where he comes where it comes from but but Walter said it to Jerry and Jerry said it to his kids and it also just became a thing that the family say when they are feeling tearful and so that's instinctive in Russ when the bully approach you know when he's feeling scared just to blurt out half glass and he's no idea why so I'm sure there's things like that in, in, my, in my life that I yeah, um, and little catchphrases we all, yeah. Um, in my family, if anyone describes something in uh, with lukewarm praise, uh, especially with the phrase quite nice, then whoever they're talking to will immediately go clean anyway, because of a famous occasion when apparently my auntie, my great auntie Phyllis went to visit my great auntie Brenda's new front room, which had just been done in new wallpaper and went quite nice, clean anyway. So yeah, we, yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, and the other one, um, yes, I don't quite know where, I'm not sure I did get the confidence because I, my heart was in my mouth, uh, certainly before the first one. And then, you know, that I was, the response to the first one was both mixed and even the people who liked it, liked it in the, which I'm, I, yeah, liked it in the sense of, not sure what's going on but looking forward to finding out which is what I was hoping for but I suppose if I'm honest I had hoped that it would stand together stand alone as an episode a bit more um and truthfully I don't think it does uh I think so yeah so that was a nervous couple of weeks I think Deborah's does a bit better and also has Russ's to play play off and then Jerry's is where it starts to coalesce but I didn't realize that when uh when we released it so that was a nerve-wracking fortnight <laughs> as we say in the chat hurrah for your confidence even if uh even if as you say you weren't necessarily actually feeling that brave <laughs> now, uh, ellie um who i hope you saw her lovely sonnet earlier and if not um uh you'll get a chance to read it later but ellie you have a question please share hello 
Um, this is such a lovely morning. It's such a nice thing to do. Um, and I think this is a question that you've said is has an answer that was cut about a lot of us want to know uh, why a galleon newt called galleon newt. Theories abound. Some clever people have them. Um, and I think we're, we're dying to know if you can tell us. Uh, yes, that's it. There's certainly, I told you at the beginning, there were various flavours of wanes in which I would say, uh, who knows? And this is um, one of those flavours I don't think we've had yet, where not only is there definitely an answer, but we wrote and recorded the sketch or the scene, which explains it. And then the last episode just had so much stuff in it. And it was the thing I could ease, uh, most easily lose. But I'm aware that it, in luckily, I don't talk too much about their nicknames. There's only really Jerry's funeral oration that mentions that it was a nickname. They're obviously, they sound like nicknames, but... And the thing um, about the amphibians. Well, yeah, he discusses the name, but he doesn't say, ah, oh, but it's not really my name. He just goes, oh, yeah, but just discuss what a newt is. So that was my, when we realised we had to cut something, in fact, more than one thing, but the first two or three things we cut were easy to cut. And then, and this is always the way, and really the way it should be, the, the, the last thing you cut should be something you desperately want to keep in. Um, and I thought, well, this, you know, as tying the things up goes, this is not indispensable. But the reason I'm not going to tell you is because, as I say, I'm hoping to do more with these characters in some way or other. And uh, I'm sure that that, well, yeah, that will be answered when I do. Very frustrating. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that what is, I'm here for. <laughs> that is a perfect summary of how we often feel after listening. Frustrating. Thank you. Um, Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer, you were next. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much for the series. It's incredibly amazing. Um, so when you first joined us, you pointed at the charts behind you. Can you tell us something about them or show us them? Or, or... Um, um, I'm just working out the best way to do it because I'm at a large computer screen here. What I'm thinking I might do is, uh, and I perhaps, you'll tell me if this won't work, but I don't see why it shouldn't. I'm going to join again using the same um, link on my phone and then I can take you there. Uh, so let me, Pause while I just do that. In the meantime, we can speculate as whether as to whether we'll manage to uh, steal a glance at the explanation for Newton Galley's nicknames while we look over the shoulder <laughs> <Good luck. laughs> of the giant. <laughs> um, why is this going to take too long? Um, shouldn't do that, should it? Come on. Jill, I notice your, your uh, hand raise option isn't working, so I, uh, I'm writing that down somewhere and I'll, I've got you in the queue of people to ask questions. Um, I'm not sure who raised their hands first now. So uh, Elisa, Mark Yvette, Megan and Alice and Jill, you will all, uh, you will all be included as much as possible. Um, I mean, you will all be asked as long as time permits. Um, and uh, yes, thank you everyone for your patience as well. Okay, I believe I have asked to join. I have admitted you. Lovely. Continue. Uh, by all means. Don't go on to sound or it will start echoing. Okay, I'm going to mute myself. Um, could someone, uh, could someone spotlight John's phone camera, um, which will be, uh, just added somewhere, someone who knows how technology works. Ah, here we go. Thank you. Okay. okay. You'll need to so, turn the volume off on the other foot, on the other one. Right. Yeah, it is muted, so I'm not sure what the no, issue his is. Other, he needs to turn his outgoing volume off on his other computer. Uh, Has that worked? No, 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 have you got headphones for one of them? That would be. That would uh, be could you actually unmute your computer, um, and that way we can just hear you at a bit of a distance, and then uh, we'll keep your phone muted. It's still, it's more than muted. It needs to not. Uh, it's outgoing as well as ingoing sound. But yes, that would work potentially. All right, I'm unmuted Perfect. on mine. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So here is the chart of the sketches in order, uh, in chronological order. So that's Russ's, that's uh, time, that's Russ's life, et cetera, Deborah's, Jerry's, um, going backwards to 2021, of course. So that's all the sketches in order. So I could work out 
uh, okay, if I'm gonna, at the funeral, uh, you know, where's Deborah living, that sort of thing. And then this is the family tree, which I think you've got excellent versions of that you've all made, but this was mine. I mean, there's others in the notebooks, but this was what I ended up with. And it's also a very tidied up version of where I started. You should have seen, I mean, I am tidied it up to show you, but I tidied it up for myself in the last couple of weeks of writing. And before that, it was a lot messier. Uh, there's the Gally's real name. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yes, I did think of that, whoever was talking about looking over my shoulder. These are the main events, not just mainly about where they lived and where they married uh, that timeline. Those are their individual years and their ages because it was a real headache going, oh, hang on, okay, he's 45, then she's what, 80? So that's what that was. Just make sure you've been able to see that. And then this one over here is the one I used to plan uh, the actual episodes out. So this is the last four. Uh, there we go. Um, inches are minutes. <laughs> so these are each sketch and then I cut them to physically represent the length they are. Because of course at this stage I'm actually constructing episodes and there were sketches that could, you know, the rule was that whoever's episode it was had to be in every sketch, but therefore Six Fist Christmas could have been in uh, two or three people's. So yeah, uh, the color coding is just about when they were recorded and the blue ones are yet to be recorded because um, I mean, they're not now, but that's when I no longer needed the chart. Um, and these are ones that didn't make it into it. Um, or old versions of one that's, that did. So shall I now go back to my main computer? Yes, please, John. And uh, incidentally, um, Rachel in the chat has just figured out uh, what your name means or your pseudonym. And so- Ah, uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, hardly well done to her. Could we change the spotlighting uh, back to John's main computer, please? Not till he puts his video on. Oh, yes, okay. I have done that. Ah, yes. I'm back. Lovely. Um, and now um, I still have a number of people with their hands raised. So um, let's see, uh, Elisa, I think you were next. Elisa, Eliza? How do I do? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? If you put your video on, I can spotlight you or you can just speak. The video is on. Okay. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for this beautiful uh, series and for the sexual representation. Uh, so, very quickly, if you can uh, choose not to answer. Uh, if in your head, uh, Newt is also a romantic or uh, if he does experience romantic attraction, if he doesn't uh, experience a sexual, sexual attraction. And if you have time also, why or what? How do you choose, did you choose the, the sketches for the final episode? It was, was there a sort of a desert island list for uh, family secrets? Did you understand? Yes, I did understand. Uh, could somebody in charge kick her midday on his phone off? Cause I'm hearing everything twice in my, so if you could just, Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll attempt that right no, now. No, he's gone lovely, thank you. Uh, but I still heard that question. I just uh, heard it in stereo as it were. Um, uh, yes, so is he a romantic as well? Well, I suppose that comes into the category of who can say in that we just don't explore. One thing I didn't expect really, when I, when I thought of the idea, I thought, I hope I'm gonna be able to find enough things to put in it. And I didn't realize how little time it is to explore five people's lives. Um, and to slightly explore five other people's lives. So there's whole swathes of people's life, you know, aspects of people's lives that we don't explore. And I tried to change what that was. So Jerry's, we hear much more about his family than his work. Uh, we, we don't hear much about, uh, but we don't hear much about Deborah's uh, sort of, we hear about her, uh, the family above her. We don't hear much about her love life before or after 
Cliff, we have that one. We don't know what went wrong with Cliff. We don't know, you know, has she been single ever since? Probably not. Uh, we haven't explored that yet. We don't know the whole story of um, Russ, Toby and Alex. So there's just, there's not enough, there was not enough room. And, and so for Newt, we, we don't know, I suppose, about his, uh, whether there were any romantic, he's certainly a, uh, so I suppose what I'm saying is it's the flavor of who can say where even I'm not quite sure. And um, as yet, and I would like to find out by writing more about him. <laughs> um, and uh, the other question, I'm afraid is, I've forgotten the other part of your question. How did you, how did you pick uh, the, the sketches for the final episode, oh, well, right, the order you. and uh, which ones? Yes, so some of them had to be in. Um, I, I knew I was building up to, um, explaining Vanessa, the exact circumstances of Vanessa's parentage. I, I hoped that, well not hoped, but I thought there would be suspicion about it, but perhaps it wouldn't be clear exactly how and why. Um, so those, that was something I was always building up, well, building up to that, and then I knew I wanted to have them all five at a wedding at the end. That was one of the first things I, I thought of, that it would, you'd have the bookends of the two Christmas, of the two sort of symmetrical, similar Christmases, but then, and that would end the because the structure of the six of the show was was sort of forced on me by circumstances in that you know a series on Radio Four is six up six half hours long, and also we have five people in our cast. So um, yeah, I, I, the Christmas is book ending the first five, and then the the sixth one ending with all of them together was something I always knew I wanted to do. So yeah, short answer is some of them. Um, uh, fitted naturally, some or chose themselves, and others of them um, were ones, you know, there were too many sketches to fit in, um, you know, uh, there were options about which ones of, you know, I could have put Stuck Horse into Vanessa's story and Washing, which is her and Queenie, into the final episode, that would have worked just as well, a sketch from her, her award service, I wouldn't have wanted them both in her show because they're too similar, so one of them had to go, um, and then sometimes it was actually dictated by simply, as you saw from my my board with the um, the inches on it. It's you have to fit these things together like a jigsaw. They've all got to be within, you know, a thirty second. Uh, the, the length has to be somewhere between. Um, I forget. Ed will know uh, something like twenty seven forty five and twenty eight fifteen, or it's a bit twenty seven thirty and twenty eight. Yeah, including yeah, right. including continuity announcements. This is Ed, the producer, by the way. Um, absolute, you know, uh, who's been with the show ever since it began, uh, co-parent of the show. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so a lot of it was jigsawing things and going, oh, well, we can have that, but that takes, you know, then as we're 30 seconds over, but we could move that in or we could, yeah. So uh, at the end, of the last part of the process, it's, it's quite um, mundane and sort of um, like packing a car boot. We've got 10 minutes left before we finish, and we wanted to have a go at doing some crackers right at the very end, but there's a few more questions left. So Rose, do you wanna just manage the last questions? Uh, yes, I think so. And Ellie, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll leave, uh, you've had one question, so I'll, I, I'll leave you out this time. Um, but of course, uh, if you have access to Padlet, John, there are lots of questions that have still been up there. So if you ever feel like cryptically referring to something on Twitter, there's a lot of good fodder there. Um, you know, some are anonymous, some are not. Now, let's see, Mark and Yvette, could you go? I mean, talk, sorry. Sure, so um, as I was listening to this multi-generational family story, it occurred to me that there are references to another multi-generational family story in other seasons of Souvenir Program. And I was wondering whether The Archers was a, uh, yeah, is, is there a connection there? Is it is it a response to The Archers? Is it a love letter? Is it criticism? What is it? Um. It is certainly not a love letter. Uh, it, no, I, uh, I'd i like to be able to say yes, but the truthful answer is I genuinely don't listen to the archers. Uh, those sketches are based on my own experience. It's sometimes on or I hear five minutes of it and I'm always amazed at how little the plot's developed since I last heard it a year and a half ago. Uh, but apart from that, um, I genuinely don't know much about, I can, I can name a handful of, of the characters with the most unusual voices but the others do all blend into one for me and I just don't know the show very well. So um, uh, I'm afraid it did not uh, uh, cross-pollinate with this at all, uh, except for the odd coincidence that uh, Margaret Capon-Smith is right now in Birmingham uh, being in the Arches. 
introducing his, uh, a guest appearance. Um, That's great. For a story. Also, can I just say that, that um, two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, uh, Souvenir Programme won an award. It was the BBC Audio... Was it, was it Audio Drama Awards? We won Best Sketch Show. And they got someone from The Archers to present it to, to John. Um, and in the sort of, they take you off afterwards to pose with it and they give you photos. And uh, <laughs> and I said, oh, that's quite funny. They asked someone from the Archers to give Souvenir Program an award. And he said, oh, why? And I went, oh, because of the sketches about the Archers. And he went, what? So <laughs> so don't feel bad that you don't listen to the Archers, John, because the Archers cast don't listen to they it. Don't listen to it. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I think some, yeah, we, we got um, about, I forget her name, I'm afraid, but that uh, very nice actor who plays uh, Linda Snell, she came to do it. She came to do a line for us, so I don't think they hate us too much. It's lovely to hear about the sort of uh, intertwined universes of the radio shows of the BBC. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, Megan, could you ask your question, please? Sure, thank you very much. Um, so you talked a little bit about how you go out plotting in different timelines, and I was wondering, how do you work out jokes in different timelines? How do you tell a joke backwards or out of order? Because I found myself laughing, not during the pro, I mean, obviously during the program, but like later on. Um, how is that possible? Yeah, um, it's, I, I mean, this was very difficult to write, as you can imagine, and part of that was judging how much it's okay to leave something unexplained and then you know it's because if you do it too much it's irritating and I definitely walked that line and always and probably fell over it um you know there are people who don't get it or just don't understand what I'm doing or, or I think possibly you know felt like that about first one or two episodes and then haven't continued with it um so I'm certainly not saying I got the balance right but there is a balance to be struck between reassuring people that they're you know so in the Rathis episode I tried to put you know the, 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 I knew that the zoom Thing. I hoped it would just feel like a slice of family life and yeah there's mysterious stuff in that but that's okay I don't expect to understand every family relationship since I hear them um, but I also knew it would be um, confusing so I tried to follow that with the sketch with him on the phone to the guy who's planning the wake which is just an, I mean that's a sketch that I could, I could genuinely put in any series that's the, the joke is about the guy it's not really about Russ Russ is the straight man in that sketch so I wanted to put things into and then ending with a straightforward old-fashioned since you ask me um although there's a context for it it's still just a since you ask me and so is the one at the end of Deborah's so I was hoping that that would reassure the audience that don't worry there's there's, there's going to be enough regular straightforward jokes to laugh at as we go but also there's stuff that you'll enjoy later uh but whether how I how well I manage that balancing act is uh uh, debatable. Thank you very much. Um, I've got all kinds of questions bubbling up, but I think we're going to dedicate the last one to Alice, who has been wait waiting so patiently, and then we're going to uh, move on to the Christmas crackers. So, Alice, uh, could you could you uh, unmute and speak, please? Hi. Um, thank you. I know a lot of people transcribed Jerry's speech because it was really affecting. And I think it's beautiful that he was married to someone who didn't speak the same language originally. And that after the aphasia, he was still able to express his, because it goes beyond words. And how difficult did you find it to write that sort of unwinnease? I, um, I really enjoyed the writing. It was, I, it took me, it wasn't difficult so much as I spent a very long time on it because obviously I wanted to get it right. As I was saying about other, things that I touch on in this, but the, you know, the show is not about, the show is also not about aphasia or recovering from a stroke, but, but I don't want to touch that if I'm not going to do it right. Um, so I did, in fact, I did a lot of research about five years ago because I was going to do a double act. Uh, in my, I do, a, if you don't, for those who don't know, I have another radio series called Double Acts, which if you liked this, by the way, and this is not a plug, it's just a fact. If you liked this, you'll like Double Acts. Um, and <laughs> one of, so I, I was, I had a plan for a double act, so it's always two people speaking, but having uh, there's only two characters for half an hour, and I had an idea where one of them would be recovering from aphasia and the other one would be going into dementia, and so they would one uh, they would be going in different directions and communicate. And I still think it's a good idea, and I might do something with it one day. But I did a lot of research on fluent or uh, Wernicke's aphasia for that, so I had that to draw on, including speaking to. Um, so I'm very bad with terminology, so please, I was going to say suffer, I know that's wrong, uh, but then I know some people hate people weird, so just give me a pass if I 
these, uh, I mean well, uh, but somebody who had aphasia, let's say, um, and um, see all of that neurotic <laughs> ass coverings meant I've forgotten what I was going to say about it. <laughs> oh yes, but the actual writing of it, um, I actually really enjoyed. It's um, it's it's and I enjoyed writing it from Jerry's perspective as well because Jerry is a poet and he enjoys language but Jerry is also beset by people who think it's predictable from his wife to the producer in that sketch where he tries to get a song on the BBC and he goes really wife and life fine and so I'm not saying he's enjoying himself but I am saying that writing Jerry and knowing what Jerry thought he was saying and then translating that into what we hear from the research I'd done about you know there's the way that aphasia takes you, sometimes you say words that sound like the real word, as in, you know, um, gently ladybird. Sometimes it's not that, it's things that have the same connotation, but the word is completely different, like dress brother for sister. Um, so there's that going, and also uh, there's reflexive little, I think they're called um, uh, phatic phrases, which are the little things that you, even but all of us in everyday life can just sometimes trot out and suffer from aphasia uh, often sort of pop. so when he says uh, Devonshire and all the places like that around there that last bit is something that suffers from aphasia or often do that kind of vamping till ready almost oh good I've got a little phrase that is just complete in my head I'm going to uh, not trot that out because it's not that that's not quite what's happening in their head but um, it's, it's certainly it's, it's, uh, that's where that comes from so trying to make it sound like a genuine uh, speech from someone uh, in that condition and then the other one the uh, the Hockett sketch trying to make that from someone who's on his road to recovery and who is more understandable but still making mistakes or still not making mistakes still not um, uh, still affected um, it was a real writing challenge and I really enjoyed it and then Simon Kane's performance uh, and they have the actors have so little time on the show partly due to me uh, being a very late last minute writer but also just even if we'd had all the script ready to go on rehearsal one we still have very little time for something this ambitious there's just not much budget to get us all together to rehearse like you would for a play for I mean for any radio you know this is just true of radio in general um so the way that Simon was able to read that a couple of times and then just perform it exactly the way it was in my my head only better uh I am in awe of Thank you. It does sound really joyous and it's lovely to, the idea of the dementia and aphasia as well. That's just amazing. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, that was the last question and I think I can speak for, uh, uh, well, I'd like to invite everyone to uh, have another round of applause for this person who, over the course of the pandemic, has blessed us with cabin, cabin fever, solved Kane's jawbone, and delivered unto us this incredibly beautiful, moving, funny, and memorable series of the show. I think that, you know, um, we, we all say it's just been a matter of surviving for the past year and a half, but uh, honestly, I don't think anyone can fully comprehend how you've done this. Um, because it has, you have, you've made all of our lives immeasurably better. I think I can speak for everyone. So let's all give John a round of applause, please. And then, um, and then we're going to move on to trying to figure out the logistics of Christmas crackers, <laughs> uh, which Fiona will be leading because I, uh, I don't have one. I don't know what they are. I'm American. Leave me out of this. <laughs> and um, yes, and thank you everyone for being here. Thank you, everyone. All right. You could all just, you could all just un unmute and shout out. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Amazing. Thank you. It's wonderful. Yay. Thank you. 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 I'm going to remove the spotlights. Everybody now needs to go on gallery view. If you have got a cracker, what you have to do is you have to go to the little thing that says stop video at the bottom of your screen. It won't work on um, phones, but it'll work for everyone else. And click on the little arrow and go to video settings and uncheck mirror my video. Next thing, if you want to make it right, go to video settings and go um, and click on hide non video participants. Okay, that means that you should and then the next thing is, if you haven't got a cracker, turn off your video. So that what we should see is only the people's mm -hmm. videos. 
with crackers, I mean. And the next thing is, I'm gonna, you're all seeing the same order of people that I'm seeing because um, I've just done full of video and I'll prove it by moving Susan Wilson um, down to the bottom. Like, oh no, that didn't work. Come on, move there. There, I've just swapped Susan Wilson with Paul and I've just swapped Paul back with Susan. You should have all seen that, is that right? Okay, put, pick up your cracker. Move your cracker. So I'm gonna do it with Paul and Susan does it with Mandy. Kate does it with Rebecca and Simon does it with Caroline. Dawn, um, I don't know about, yeah, Dawn do it with Jennifer and Morris do it with Robert. Chun Ho do it with Jamie and Somia do it with Gerald. Right. So, Susan, you need to... <laughs> um, Mandy, yours is in the wrong side of your screen. And Susan, you need to hold it with your right hand. Yep. Sorry, Mandy, hold it with your left hand and push it that way, that's it. Oh, and Dawn, you need to go the other direction too. Yeah. Dawn, hold it with your right hand and push it towards your left. Dawn, hold it. I, with your I punch a wall. That's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh okay. God! Now, Chun Ho, you need to um, put it in your left. Chun Ho, you need to have it on the other side. That's it. Right, and move it a little bit into the picture so we can see it. And Soumya, you need to have yours um, over the other side of the screen. Other side. Other side. That's it. Perfect, that's it. Oh yeah, that's it. So you hold it with the other hand and then you can all, that's what you meant, John, when you said, oh, right, that's how you do it. So you hold it with the hand that is, Dawn, you've got it on the wrong side. That's right. Dawn, you've got it on the wrong side of your screen. Please. I, I'll flip my screen back to mirror then because if I try and give it a side, I'm hitting- Don't argue with me, just put it on the other side. <laughs> Which I can't really. Dawn, just, just put it on the other sides. Trust me. Please. And then that will be everybody and we can do it. Dawn. Okay, she might have frozen or something. Right, let's all the rest of us just do it. One, two, three. Hooray! Yay! Yay! I won! Hooray! Raise your hand if you won. Now and me, I won. <laughs> Everyone. Everyone wins. <laughs> okay, guys. Now the next thing. Take up the hat. Tear up the hat. <laughs> Tear up the hat. <laughs> <laughs> and put some put some appreciations in the chat. I'm going to keep this open for another ten minutes just to take some more chat comments, and then we'll all go. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye, thank you, Ray. Bye, bye. Last word. <laughs>